The first scene shows the Otsuka on fire. There are no visible survivors in the area. The camera pans to show us a young boy, Shino, who is holding on to life. His friend, Hamaji, is also beside him trying to get him to stay conscious. The camera shifts to show us that the boy's dog, Yoshiro, is dying too. Finally, we get to see the boy's childhood friend, Sosuke, is also slowly losing his grip on life. Just then, a man in white shows up and offers Shino the chance to stay alive. Five years later, Shino, Hamaji, and Sosuke are living in a secluded place. Shino now has a spirit bird, Murasami as a companion. Shino is in the lake having fun when Murasami picks up a one-eye ball critter that makes Shino uncomfortable. Shino picks up the critter and throws it far away. He makes his way home after this, Hamaji makes tea for him, but he doesn't like the taste of the tea. Meanwhile, Sosuke is visiting their friend who lives in the nearby village. The boy's name is Kenta, and he is the only one that Sosuke and his family talk to in that village. Sosuke gets there when Kenta's parents are busy scolding him for not going to school. Sosuke manages to get his parents to lay off him. When it is time for Sosuke to return home, Kenta decides to see him off but he lies to his parents that he is going to the church instead. As they walk through the village, the villagers start to gossip about Sosuke. They all believe that he will bring disease to their village. They know him as one of the survivors of Atsuka village. The Atsuka village is believed to have been wiped out by a disease. Kenta just tells him not to mind the villagers. They can only talk, and that's the worst they can do. Sosuke gives Kenta a pendant to wear. Kenta reluctantly collects the pendant and wears it. Moments later, they arrive at their home. Kenta appears to be shy around Hamaji. Sosuke calls Shino to a private place and scolds him for going to the forest alone. He has warned him severally to stop going to the forest alone, but he won't listen. Shino claims that Murasame was with him, so he is basically not alone. But Sosuke tells him that it is still dangerous to walk in the forest alone. Shortly afterward, Kenta starts to return home. On his way home, he sees a person who is a spitting image of Shino calling to him inside the forest. As he moves closer, the pendant on his neck jingles, and the person just disappears. Later on, Shino and Sosuke are informed that Shino has been summoned by the church. There is the possibility that they are looking for Murasami, and that is the reason they have called for Shino. They are in the middle of this conversation when the critter shows up again, but this time around, it is much bigger than it was in the morning. Meanwhile, the man who saved Shino five years ago has now learned that the church has sent for Shino. The man, Ryo Satomi, and his brother, Kanami Osaki, wonder why they cannot just leave the kids alone to live a normal life. The following day, escorts from the church show up to take Shino and Sosuke away. Shino wastes no time and getting rid of them. They soon find out that the people that came are not actually from the church, but they are the Osaki's Goko 5 foxes. The men that the kids are staying with are worried that Shino and his friends have drawn the attention of some powerful forces. Moments later, Kenta shows up to tell the group what he saw the night before when he was returning home. Kenta also adds that there are three men who are missing from the village. After Kenta tells them this, Shino and Sosuke tell Kenta not to come to their place again. They also tell him to steer clear of the forest. The two do not emphasize the dangers in the forest and why they don't want him coming around again. This makes Kenta feel like they are just chasing him away. He gets angry, runs out of the house, tears off the pendant that Sosuke gave him and starts running home. Sosuke runs after Kenta to try and calm him down. After Sosuke's departure, Hamaji found the pendant outside. Meanwhile, we find out that Kaname was the one who sent the foxes to fetch the kids. He needs another way to get them to cooperate since his plan A has failed. He thinks of using Hamaji as leverage. Shortly afterwards, Sosuke returns home to tell Hamaji that he didn't see any traces of Kenta. Hamaji then shows him the pendant. She informs him that Shino has gone after Kenta too. Sosuke immediately knows something is wrong and he runs into to the forest. He takes on Yoshiro's form to run faster. Shino finds Kenta being held by the same woman Kenta saw before. Kenta has white things like webs around him. The woman is riding a monster that spits out webs from its mouth. Sosuke shows up just in time to break Kenta free. Shino gets angry and transforms Murasame into a sword to cut down the monster in just one strike. Sosuke teases Shino that there is little or nothing that can stop him when he is wielding Murasame. Unknown to them, Hamaji has been taken away from home by the foxes. Shino and Sosuke get home to learn about this from their pops. He tries to explain to them how the four houses of the sacred beast came to be. Children that are chosen by sacred beasts are born into the four houses. The church decided to take the houses under their care in a bid to control their power. Sosuke decides that they will be going to the imperial capital the next day to retrieve their sister or find out what exactly the church or the four houses want from them. In the next scene, we get to find out that Hamaji is actually having fun with Konami at their mansion. She is being taken care of and she doesn't lack anything too. On the other hand, Sosuke and Shino have also arrived at the capital. They are received by some people from the church. Just then, Ryo Satomi shows up and says he will be the one to take the boys away. Shino appears to recognize Satomi, 
but Sosuke has no idea who he is. Satomi says it is his job to take care of the survivors of Otsuka Village. Sosuke looks confused, and Shino tells him that Satomi is a member of the Four Houses of the Sacred Beasts. After taking custody of the two boys, Satomi drops them off at the Kino Hotel. Shino is hyped to take a stroll through the city, so he just leaves immediately without even stepping inside the hotel. Unknown to Shuno, the critter came with him from the village. While walking through the city, Shino gets run over by a man, Kobungo. Kobungo is arguing with the people of the Shogetsu Institute when he gets thrown out, causing him to fall on Shino. He wants them to release his brother-in-law, Genpachi, but the monks claim that they apprehended a demon and not his brother. Kobungo's father shows up to apologize to Father Seiran for his son's ignorance and urges him to not punish him. While all of this is going on, Kabungo has no idea that he is stepping on Shino. His father notices this and calls his attention to it. The duo realizes that Shino has passed out already. They see a birthmark on his arm, and the two decide to take care of him. Shino wakes up and starts to consume all the food that is given to him. Kabungo is surprised by this. He is forced to ask Shino if he has not eaten for the past year because he is just consuming everything given to him without taking a break. Moments later, Murasame and Sosuke, who is in Yoshiro's form, come to pick Shino up. After his departure, Kabungo almost faints when he is presented with the bill of everything that Shino ate. Shino tries to tell Sosuke that he didn't wander off. He was just a victim of bad luck. Later on, Seiran goes to Abbot Miyoko's chambers to tell him about the demon they captured. The demon is said to consume spirits, and he is none other than Genpachi. Miyoko doesn't see any reason why Genpachi should be held captive, but Seiran insists that it will be bad for everyone if he is left roaming. The following morning, Shino wakes up to a visit from Satomi and his giant spirit dog. Satomi is surprised to know that Shino still remembers him. Only Sosuke has little or no memory of what happened back then. Satomi talks about how Shino has not aged since he became one with Murasami. No one really knows the true nature of Murasami. Some say it's a divine being, while others believe it is a demon. Shino and Satomi are in the middle of a show of force when Sosuke enters the room. He is surprised to see Satomi with Shino once again. Satomi tells them that their friend, Hamaji, is at the Four Houses Manor and they will be heading there shortly. Meanwhile, Kabungo is thinking of what to do to help Genpachi. His father tells him that he cannot confront the Institute head-on. He needs a plan, and he will try to ask around to know the way forward. Kabungo is seriously worried that Genpachi is in big trouble. He hopes that he will not die in captivity. Later on, Sosuke, Shino, and Satomi arrive at the Four Houses' Manor. Hamaji is happy to see her brothers. However, she initially hits Shino in the head for not coming to save her earlier. Shino asks if the foxes are maltreating her, but she replies that it is the other way round. They have been taking care of her every need. They are welcomed by Kaname, who tells the group that he didn't kidnap Hamaji but invited her over. Hamaji takes a good look at Satomi and wonders where she has seen him before. Shortly afterward, Hamaji, Kaname, Sosuke, and Shino decide to take a stroll. Sosuke asks Shino what his relationship with Satomi is, but he just answers that it is nothing special. All the dogs in the town square start gathering around Sosuke. It appears that he is popular with the dog, because of the dog spirit that resides within him. Meanwhile, Siran has one of his bugs trailing the the group and giving him information about them. After getting some of the information he needs, Siran goes to Genpachi's cell to torture him. He uses the hundreds of bugs at his disposal to do this. Siran wants Genpachi to reveal his demon form, but he is trying his best not to do so. He is in so much pain, but he is enduring it just to stop himself from transforming. In the next scene, Hamaji finds Kaname, who is busy drinking himself to death. Kaname wishes that Hamaji will stay, but she says she cannot. She needs to go with her brothers. She tells Kaname that he has the foxes to keep him company. On the other hand, Shino has turned the critter into a ball, which he now throws around the room. Sosuke enters the room after bathing and demands to know Shino's relationship with Satomi. Shino wants to shy away from the question as usual, but Sosuke keeps pressuring him, and he no longer has a choice but to answer him. Shino then reveals that Satomi was the one who saved them from the brink of death in Atsuka Village five years back. After that, Shino swore that he would repay the favor. Shino believes that Satomi has summoned them because of that. Sosuke finally understands the reason Shino accepted to be one with Murasame. Shino assures Sosuke that he will always be there to protect him and Hamaji from any harm. Sosuke then informs Shino that they will go to Satomi the next day to ask him why he needs them. The following day, Sosuke, Shino, Hamaji, and Kaname go out for sightseeing again. Shino wants to see Satomi, but he's apparently busy and would only be able to attend to them later. Meanwhile, Kabungo is causing a ruckus at the military base too. He wants them to provide Genpashi, who was an active soldier before his disappearance. The soldiers throw him out and claim that Genpashi has been fired by the military because he has been on unauthorized leave. Just as he is being thrown out, he falls on Shino once again. This time around, Kabungo takes Shino and Sosuke to his mother's inn. Hamaji has no idea where Shino and Sosuke have disappeared to. Kanami says she is worried about the boys, but she denies this. After Shino and Sosuke are done eating, they start leaving. Shino asks Kabungo why he is always getting into fights, 
and he reveals that the Shogetsu Institute has taken his brother captive. Kabungo didn't tell them more than this before leaving. Later that night, Shino and Sosuke go to Satomi's chambers to talk to him. Sosuke goes straight to the point and he asks him why Satomi has asked them to come to the capital. Satomi opens his drawer and brings out two gems that are tagged duty and devotion. The two gems once belonged to Sosuke and Shino. They had no idea that the gems were still in existence, and Satomi was in possession of the gems. Duty belonged to Sosuke, while devotion was Shino's gem. Satomi reveals that there are six other gems just like that. There is a tale that surrounds the gems. Satomi wants Sosuke and Shino to find the other two gems before he can hand them the other two. Shino believes that it is impossible because it will be difficult to find the owners of the gems because the world is vast and the people living in it are much too. Shino is still talking about this when Sosuke cuts in and says they will look for the gems. Satomi informs the two that he wants the gem to be found in secret, and that is the reason he is not involving just anybody. Now at the Shogetsu Institute, Kobungu's father tries to beg Seiran to let Genpachi go, but he refuses. After he is done rejecting the old man's offer, he proceeds to the basement to continue inflicting pain on Genpachi. When he realizes that physical pain is not doing the job, resorts to psychological pain. He reminds Genpachi about the death of his loved one, and this is enough to make him transform into his demon self. Genpachi destroys the majority of the room when he transforms. Most of the monks with Siran also lose their lives, but Siran manages to stay alive. Genpachi flies out of there in search of a spirit to consume. Shino and Sosuke are walking back to the hotel when Genpachi shows up. The people start to panic and run helter-skelter. Shino immediately knows that the demon is after him, and he tells Sosuke that he will lure him away. Shino starts running away from town, and Genpachi follows him. Sosuke also transforms into Yoshiro the dog and follows them. Fortunately, Kabungo sees them jumping on the rooftops, and he starts to follow them too. When Shino realizes that he has led Genpachi far Far away from the town, he turns around to fight him. He summons Murasame to do this. During the fight, Shino is able to find out that Genpachi is human, and he is in severe pain about the death of his loved one, Nui. Sosuke soon arrives on the scene, and Shino tells him what he has been able to find out while he is fighting Genpachi. Moments later, Siran arrives with several other armed monks. Siran sees the sword that Shino is holding, and he recognizes it as Murasami. Siran orders his bugs and the monks to attack Shino, Sosuke, and Genpachi. They fire arrows at the trio causing them to fall into the river below. As Shino tries to reach out to Sosuke, who is already unconscious, the critter in his pocket comes out and changes into a giant balloon to help the trio stay afloat. Shino tells Murasami to fly off and tell Satomi about their predicament. Sosuke is glad that the critter finally came in handy, because they would have died if not for the critter. Seiran has tasked his men to find the trio and especially the legendary sword, Murasami. Meanwhile, Hamaji has been informed by Kaname that she will need to find a school in the capital because there is the possibility that Shino and Sosuke will stay longer than they planned. Moments later, Kabungo finds the trio and rescues them. Satomi's spirit dog soon joins them at the inn, too. Genpachi also wakes up from his sleep, and he starts to wonder if yesterday's events were a dream. Shino is surprised to find out that Genpachi also has a birthmark on the right side of his cheek. Genpachi recognizes Satomi's spirit dog the moment he sees the dog. He wonders if Shino is working for Satomi. After Genpachi leaves the room, Shino talks about how fast he has recovered, and Kabungo replies that Genpachi is built like that. He decides to tell him a story about the incident that happened three years ago in the north. Some bandits from another country held some villagers hostage. Genpachi was sent to handle the situation. He was a commanding officer then, and Kabungo accompanied as a foot soldier. The mission would have been over quickly if not for the princess Sai who was among the hostages. The battle dragged along more than it was supposed to. Some soldiers started to desert at some point. One day, man-eating demons attacked the village and eliminated all of the soldiers including Kabungo and Genpachi. While the two are slowly losing their grip on life, their determination to continue living somehow saves them. It appears that the two are in possession of the Trust and Harmony gems, but Kobungu doesn't seem to know more about the events of that snowy night. All he knew was that they were somehow saved. Kobungu then shows Shino a picture of Nui, his sister. She was engaged to Genpachi before he went on the mission. Genpachi fought hard to return to her, but he was completely broken when he got home to realize that his fiancé had passed away. He tried to eliminate himself on several occasions, but it wasn't possible for him to do. He once tried to die by cutting his own throat, but the injury healed in no time. Kabungu Kabungu also realizes that the same phenomenon is happening to his body. Something happened to them that night, but they had no idea what it was. It was Satomi and his dog spirit that later came to get rid of the bandits that were holding the villagers hostage. Satomi should have gone in the first place, but the army was proud to ask him for help. It was the royal family who later begged for his help. Kabungu then asks Shino why the monks are after him 
and he reveals that they are after Murasami. Now at the Shogetsu Institute, Seiran is trying to convince the abbot why they should go after Shino, but the abbot is not in line with Seiran. Seiran then attacks the abbot with his bugs and holds him in confinement. Kobungo and Genpachi sit down outside to discuss while Shino and Sosuke are asleep. Unknown to them, Seiran is monitoring them with the help of his bugs. Their location is compromised, and they have no idea that they are already in danger. Later on, Hamaji and Kaname are taking a stroll through town. Kaname tells Hamaji how the five foxes are always ready to protect him at any given time. Suddenly, Hamaji gets attacked by one of Seiran's bugs. Kaname is absolutely furious because of this. He has never bothered himself with what Seiran has been up to, but he has crossed the line for coming after Hamaji, he says. Up next, Seiran has gathered monks to go after Shino and the rest of the boys. Meanwhile, Genpachi is busy naming the critter. He finds a befitting name for the critter. He calls the critter Megu. Moments later, they find out that they are already surrounded by monks and Seiran's bugs. Sosuke and Shino are faced with bugs, while Genpachi and Kobungo are faced with armed monks. Siran then tells Genpachi how Nui died. He reveals that Nui was pregnant with another man's baby. She was broken when she learned that Genpachi was returning and eliminated herself. Genpachi finds it hard to control himself when he hears this and transforms into his demon self. The reaction from his transformation eliminates most of the monks and also results in Seiran losing one of his arms. Seiran tries to escape but Konami shows up. It turns out that Konami and Seiran are brothers. Konami tells Seiran that he cannot forgive him for hurting Hamaji. He sends the foxes after Seiran and the sound of Seiran's scream can be heard from afar. To extinguish the fire that has engulfed the area, Shino uses one of Murasame's abilities to call down rain to quench the raging fire. After the dust has settled, Genpachi scolds Kabungo for not telling him about Nui. Kabungo says he didn't want to hurt Genpachi, and this is the reason he didn't tell him how Nui died. In the next scene, Shino wakes up in the middle of the night to take a stroll through the extremely giant mansion. He gets to an unexplored part of the mansion that looks totally different. He tries entering but sees a pair of red eyes looking at him. Just then, Satomi touches him from the back and drags him away, causing him to jump scared. Satomi warns him not to step into that area because another master presides over the area. Even Satomi and his brothers are not allowed to enter there without permission. The duo goes to Satomi's office to talk after this. Kaname informs the two that the Shigetsu Institute will have no reason to bother them again. The abbot has retired and Seiran is missing. There will be no one to conduct a demon hunt in the meantime. Moments later, Satomi leaves. After his departure, Shino asks Kaname where Satomi usually goes most of the time. Kaname Kami then reveals that Satomi is a dean at the church, and that is where he goes. He is a very busy man in the church. During their discussion, Shino reveals that Sosuke usually sleeps most of the day when it is the day of the new moon. This is the reason no one has seen him outside. Murasame also prefers to stay inside his body throughout without leaving during the new moon day. Shino stands up to visit Sosuke in his room. Sosuke wakes up from a weird dream, and when he sees Shino beside him, he tells Shino to stay with him throughout the day. However, Shino soon gets hungry, and he leaves to find food. The foxes are not around, and he has no choice but to visit the kitchen himself. While walking through the hallway, he runs into a girl, Ayane. Murasami pops his eyes out, and this scares Ayane. She runs away without looking back. He tells Kaname about this. Kaname then decides to tell him about Ayane Mizuki. Kaname says Ayane was chosen by a snake spirit. She is also a member of the four houses of the sacred beasts. She hardly ever leaves her wing. Kaname considers Shino lucky because the snake spirit would have ended him, if he had done anything to Ayane. Hamaji arrives and she helps to fix the bunch of flowers that Ayane was holding in her hands before running away. Hamaji says she needs a friend, and Ayane will be the perfect candidate. She urges Shino to take the flowers to Ayane and ask her to become her friend. After Shino's departure, Kanami reveals that the snake spirit is jealous and will not hesitate to eliminate anyone who intrudes on his space. You could have told him this before going, bro. Shino gets to the area of the house where Satomi says it is forbidden and realizes that he is not feeling too well. Murasame wants to emerge, but Shino tells him that he will be fine. Just then, the snake spirit, Chikage, which is also the Mizuki family's guardian deity, emerges. He pushes Shino to the floor and asks him why he is trespassing on his territory, after he has been warned by Satomi to stay away. He is about to grab Shino when Sosuke shows up and starts begging on his behalf. The snake spirit says he cannot allow them to go without punishing them. He gives Sosuke a knife to cut one of his arms off. Sosuke is about to do this when Ayane shows up and calls Chikaj a cruel person before running away. Chikaji feels guilty and he has no choice but to let the two go. Sosuke scolds Shino for not heeding his words. Later on, Ayane brings tea for the two but she starts to leave when she sees the position that she met the duo. Shino immediately calls her back to tell her that it is not what she thinks. Ayane thanks Shino for the flowers, but Shino says Hamaji is to be thanked for that. Shino then officially invites Ayane for tea and she accepts. 
place. Later on, Konami and the Foxes see Hamaji and Ayani playing in the yard, and this surprises them. They are shocked that Shikaji allowed Ayani to leave their wing to play with Hamaji. Hamaji then talks about a lantern festival in town that she would like to attend. She invites Ayani, but Ayani doesn't know if Chikaji will give her permission to go. Later that night, Chikaji calls Shino to his chambers to talk to him about Ayani. He reveals that he has a duty to protect Ayani, but he has lived so long that his body has become too big. Whenever he moves, the earth shakes with it. He cannot leave his land, and this is the reason he cannot let Ayani out of his sight. However, he doesn't want it to be like he is holding her down. Shino then suggests that Chikaji borrow Konami's foxes anytime Ayani is going out. The foxes are more than capable of protecting Ayani from any harm, he says. With this, Shino is able to convince Chikaji to let Ayani leave the compound and go to the town for the Lantern Festival. That night, Chikaji visits Shino in his room and he thanks him for his help. He then reveals that his true name is not Chikaji. He already has some level of trust for Shino, and he is ready to tell him his real name. He tells him that the Murasami that Shino holds in his body terrifies him because he has the capacity to end him, but he is trusting him nonetheless. He then reveals that his real name is Hibiki. He gives Shino a white shiny gem that looks like an egg before leaving. In the next scene, Shino reads in the paper about a deadly disease that seems to be ravaging a village. This appears to be the same disease that wiped out Otsuka Village back then. Satomi tells Shino that five men went to a mountain known as the Stashed Mountain. Usually nobody comes back from the mountain alive, but the five do. After their arrival from the mountain, their whole party came down with a disease and died. This was the start of the deadly disease. While he was telling Shino this, a group of musicians appeared to have made their way to the village. A person named Asakeno is among them. Satomi tells Shino that the five men claimed to have been saved by a woman when they were on the mountain. This strikes some sort of memory in Shino's heart. It's as if he knows the woman. Later on, Sosuke comes to Satomi's chambers to tell him that he cannot find Shino anywhere. Satomi immediately realizes that Shino must have gone to the village. Satomi tells Sosuke to follow Shino immediately. On the other hand, Shino had made it to the village and he has entered the stashed mountains. His gem and Sosuke's gem in his pocket starts to glow, and this has never happened before. He suddenly slips off a cliff and falls down, causing him to pass out. Meanwhile, Sosuke is at the train station booking tickets for the next available train that is heading to the village when he runs into Kabungo and Genpachi. The two offer to follow him to the village. Sosuke has a hazy memory of their time in Otsuka village. He remembers that he, Shino, and Hamaji were saved from the disease because they were not in their village when the disease broke out. Shortly afterward, Shino wakes up to find out that he has lost Sosuke's gem. He is still thinking about this when the giant spirit monkey that resides in the area shows up. Shino doesn't appear to be scared of the monkey. He even asks the monkey if he has seen Sosuke's gem. The monkey throws down some sort of golden stone for Shino. Shino realizes that there is no way the monkey will be able to find the tiny gem and he tells the monkey not to worry. He starts asking the monkey questions about the villagers and the woman that they said might have been with them. The monkey looks confused by all the questions he is asking. Suddenly, Sosuke, Genpachi, and Kobungo show up. Shino tries telling them that he was talking to the spirit monkey, but there is no monkey in sight when they arrive. He also tells Sosuke about the gem, but Sosuke doesn't look that worried. He says they will find the gem later. As they leave the mountain, they run into some villagers. The mayor wastes no time in locking them up when he learns that they are coming from the mountain. This is their own way of quarantine. They want to make sure that the four are not carrying any diseases with them. Meanwhile, the village doctor, Saiki, has been informed by her assistant, Joji, that some people who came down from the mountain have been quarantined. Asakeno and his group also learn of this. Shortly afterward, Saiki shows up to test the four for their blood to make sure that they are not carrying any disease with them. Genpachi and Kabungo are surprised to see Joji. It turns out that Joji was part of their squad when they were in the army. While they are in the middle of the test, Asakeno comes to the cell. He looks through the outside window and he is shocked to see Sosuke. He claims that Sosuke is the man who eliminated his entire family. Later on, Saiki comes to release the four from prison. She has done the test on them to find out that that they are not a carrier of any disease. She takes them to the church where they can stay in the meantime. Shino decides to leave and search for the gem. Sosuke tries to stop him, but he refuses. As he walks a few meters from the church, he runs into Asakeno, who asks him if they will be staying for a while, and he says yes. They will be staying at the church till the festival is over so that they can finally leave. Meanwhile, Sosuke is in the church doing some cleaning when Saiki shows up. She tells him that they only made it back from the mountain because it seems that the monkey spirit that resides there has soft spots 
spots for children. On the other hand, Joji has found the golden stone that the monkey gave Shino. Shino forgot it inside the cell room. That night, Sosuke is in the church hall all alone when he is attacked by Asakeno. He accuses him of annihilating his entire family. Shino enters the hall at that moment to see Asakeno pulling a sword out of his friend's shoulder. Shino rushes over in anger and summons Murasami. Sosuke tries to tell Asakeno that he has the wrong man, but she is not ready to listen. Asakeno and Shino charge toward each other, but Shino soon finds out that he is no match for Asakeno. Asakeno easily disarms him. Just then, Sosuke transforms into Yoshiro, and this shocks Asakeno. She realizes that Sosuke is not the man he is looking for. At that same moment, a woman with long hair who is also Asakeno's comrade shows up. Her name is Kokono, and she looks stern. She tells Asakeno to stop attacking the boys because they are not the ones she is looking for. Kokonoi apologizes on behalf of Asakeno, whom she calls her child. Shino then tells Kokonoi to help him find Sosuke's lost gem as her token of apology. Later on, Kobungo finds out that all four of them have identical birthmarks in different places on their body. Genpachi has it on his right cheek, while Shino has it on his right arm. Up next, Joji comes rushing in to tell the four and Saiki that there is a big problem. One of the villagers saw him holding the stone he found in Shino's cell room, and all of them are now heading to the mountain. It turns out that the stone is nothing but pure gold. Shino had no idea what the stone was, and didn't pay much attention to it. Shino is surprised that the villagers are heading to the mountain after they have heard stories of what happens to people there. He reveals that he will not try to stop them from going. Whatever they face, there will be their own problem. Saiki is surprised to hear this, and she wonders if Shino knows about the spirit of the mountain. The monkey doesn't tolerate adults, but children and spirits can enter there. She remembers when she was still a child and she goes to the mountain to play with the monkey. She even gave the spirit monkey a name back then to show how close they were. Later on, Asakeno shows up to apologize to Shino and Sosuke for what he did. Shino then asks him if he knows much about Kokonoi, but he says no. He says Kokono is the woman who saved his life and he hasn't seen any reason to dig into her personal life. Shino is well aware that Kokonoi is a spirit, but he is not ready to divulge that information. Meanwhile, Kokono is seen discussing with the monkey spirit. The monkey spirit has lived so long that he no longer knows the purpose of his existence and what he is supposed to be protecting. Apparently, rain only falls on the mountain, and that is what the village uses to sustain itself. Now in the village, the villagers have gathered at the church. They demand that Shino follow them to show them the way around the mountain, but Saiki says no. Later on, Saiki finds out that the villagers have kidnapped Shino, Genpachi, Sosuke, Kobungo, and Asakeno to follow them to the mountain. The group soon gets trapped inside a barrier. They would have remained there if not for Murasami who blindly flies into the wall, causing the barrier to shatter. The spirit monkey shows up looking all scary and starts to terminate the villagers. Shino is surprised to see this because the last time he saw the monkey, it was not aggressive. Saiki has made her way onto the mountain and she runs into a dead monkey. She sees a gold ring on one of the monkey's fingers. This triggers her memory and she realizes that this was the baby monkey, Asahi she gave to the spirit monkey as a companion when she was little. She told the spirit monkey that she would be back but she never went back to the mountain again. Saiki feels bad for Asahi and she takes off her scarf to cover the dead body. She continues her journey deep into the mountain. After her departure, Kokonoi shows up to take away the monkey's spirit. It turns out that the monkey was not fully dead, but it now finally has the comfort to say goodbye after it has seen Saiki once again. Just as Kokono takes its body off the ground, there lies Sosuke's gem. The spirit monkey continues to destroy the mountain and Shino asks him why he is doing so. The spirit monkey claims that everything he is meant to protect is finally gone. He no longer has any purpose of living. Shino argues that he can let him destroy the mountain because unlike him, he still has people who need him. The spirit monkey then reveals that he will only listen to the voice of the child who made him promise to protect the mountain. Just then, Saiki shows up and says she is the child. She calls the spirit monkey by the name she gave him, which is Shino Nome. Shino begs Saiki to talk some sense into the monkey, but she says no. Kokonoi also shows up and reveals that she has found Sosuke's gem. Saiki says, Shinonome is free to flatten the mountain if he wants. It is his choice if he doesn't want to share his gold and water with humans because they are greedy. However, she is happy that she got to see Shinonome again. The moment she says this, the monkey calms down and everything returns to normal. Saiki tells Shinonome that the next person he will meet is her future child. After this, the group returns to the village. Some of the villagers come to ask Saiki if she has any idea where the villagers who went to the mountain are, but she says no. That night, Shino learns that Genpachi and Kabungo and Demons of Wind and Light respectively. He also learns that Kokono gave Asahi a vial of water that is capable of granting any wish he wants. No one knows what Asahi wished for, 
but he definitely wished for something. The following day, Shino and his friends leave the village to return to the capital. In a flashback scene, we see a young man dying in the snow. He talks about how he is not ready to give up because of his sister. Now in the present day, the same man is seen aboard a train. This is the same train that Shino, Genpachi, Kobungo, and Sosuke are planning to take to the capital. Sosuke and Shino enter into the first class coaches, while Genpachi and Kobungo take the economy coaches. Shino and Sosuke enter into the same coach with the young man. The man looks sternly at Shino when he sees him. Suddenly, it starts to rain. Sosuke takes off his jacket to cover Shino. He then leaves the coat for a few minutes to check with the conductor. After his departure, Shino talks about the snow and how he wishes that it snowed. The young man is surprised that Shino will be wishing for snowy weather in the middle of the summer. Some minutes later, it starts to snow and the young man is absolutely blown away by this. Just then, a drunk guy enters the coach. The young man tries telling him to leave, but he wouldn't listen. Shino is forced to throw the eyeball at the drunk guy to throw him out of the coach. Sosuke arrives at the same time and he pours water on the eyeball to make it inflate like a balloon so it can trap the drunk guy and prevent him from coming into the coach again. The young man is blown away when he sees this. He wonders what type of people Shino and Sosuke are. Shino wished for snowy weather and it came to pass. However, the weather soon subsides and everything goes back to the usual cool weather. Shino soon sleeps off and he uses Sosuke's laps as his pillow. The young man is still scared of the eyeball and he can't even get himself to look at the creature which he calls a devil of unknown origin. Soon afterward, a monk gets on the train. He comes aboard with the intention of eliminating the spirits that are currently on the train. He makes his way directly directly to the coach where Shino is. There is a cold breeze oozing from the coach and as he opens the door he looks directly at the young man. Just then, a spirit emerges from the young man's body and throws the monk away. The spirit traps the monk inside of an ice shard. Shino recognizes the spirit and he calls her the Snow Princess. The princess also recognizes Shino and she moves closer to Shino to touch him. Shino is very happy to see the princess, but this comes as a shock to the young man. He wonders how the two know each other. Shino reveals that he met the princess in the forest. The princess always sings for him during during winter, but one day the princess disappeared. The lord of the forest was worried. The princess doesn't utter one word while Shino is talking to her, but she makes gestures to reply to him. She uses a gesture to tell Shino that she is with the young man whom they are sharing a coach with. The young man starts to beg Shino to tell the princess to leave him. He is always cold and this has made almost all of his friends and girlfriends leave him. Shino scolds the young man and tells him that the princess is only trying to protect him. For the princess to even reveal herself to humans, shows how much she wants to keep him safe. Shino adds that the young man will die if the princess leaves him. Since the princess saved him when he was dying in the snow, when the princess saved him, he has become one with her. He says the princess is even making a great sacrifice by being with him. He is about to say what the princess has lost when the princess stops him. Soon afterward, Shino and Sosuke get to their stop and they alight from the train. They leave the monk inside the ice cage that the princess put him in. Before the train starts moving again, the young man runs after Shino and Sosuke to ask for their names. He introduces himself as Dosetsu to the guys and the guys do the same. Murasame also emerges from Shino's arms to say goodbye to Dosetsu and the Snow Princess. As they walk away from the train station, Sosuke asks Shino what the princess sacrificed to save Dosetsu. He reveals that the princess gave up her beautiful voice to save Dosetsu. The Snow Princess always sang during the winter but that is no more again because she chose to save Dosetsu so he can return to his sister. Later that night, the four return to Kobungo's mother's inn. In the next scene, Hamaji tells Kanami that she is now ready to attend school. She will be attending an all-girls school. This will make it hard for Sosuke and Shino to come to visit her, she says. Once she is ready to leave, Sosuke asks her if she will not wait for Shino to be around so she can say goodbye to him, but she says no. Shino is currently running an errand for Satomi so he is not around. Hamaji tells Sosuke that she has a package that she wants delivered later. She suggests that Shino bring them to her. Shino looks like a girl so it will be very easy for him to enter the school. Later that night, Shino picks up the package that Hamaji wants him to deliver. He opens the package to check what is inside. He realizes that it contains three books, and all the books are written on the details on how to eliminate someone. Shino wonders what Hamaji wants to use the books for. Sosuke escorts Shino to the school gate, but refuses to enter because it's an all-girls school. As he enters the school, he wishes that Hamaji will meet someone who will keep her company while she is at the school. Hamaji is in her room when a girl enters the room and introduces herself as Suzu. She tells Hamaji that she is her roommate. Back at the Four Houses Manor, Kaname is already missing Hamaji and so are the foxes. They wonder why Hamaji changed her mind about going to school. Kanemi then reveals that Hamaji made the decision to go to school and become a doctor so she can help Shino in case he falls sick again. Now at the school, Hamaji shares the muffins that Sosuke made for her with Suzu. She is really happy that she has made a friend already. Suzu tells Hamaji about the school prefect, Ruri. She says Ruri is very strict and Hamaji should be careful around her. Just then, Murasame shows up to tell Hamaji that Shino is waiting for her in the yard. She meets with Shino and he hands her the books she requested. As Shino leaves the school he feels something following him 
He turns back to check, and the next thing that Sosuke hears from the gate is Shino's scream. He runs into the school to retrieve Shino. Sosuke finds out that Shino is not moving. He takes him to Kabungo's place. The following morning, Shino finally has the strength to move and talk. When Kabungo and the others ask him what happened, he tells them that he saw a ghost. When asked to draw the ghost that he saw, he drew something like a stuffed animal and this made the group laugh at him more. Kokono, on the other hand, wants to believe Shino's story, but she needs some kind of proof. Now in the school, Hamaji is walking through the hallway when she runs into Ruri. Ruri reveals that she is aware that Hamaji left the dorm yesterday night and that is against the rules. Hamaji apologizes and says she has to meet her sister. Ruri warns her not to repeat such. She informs Hamaji that the school has a guard even though no one has ever seen the guard before. However, the guard is fierce with her punishments, she says. Later on, Asakeno suggests that they go to the school to investigate what got Shino creeping into his pants. Shino doesn't want to go, but Asakeno tells him that Hamaji will not truly be safe if they don't find out what the problem is. Shino is well aware that Hamaji is alone in the school, and she will have no one to save her if she runs into trouble. He then agrees to go to the school again so that they can investigate. Upon getting to the school, Shino, Asakeno, and Sosuke feel something getting close to them. They turn back to find a stuffed animal looking at them. They don't know if the stuffed animal is a bear or a rabbit. Just then, the stuffed animal speaks and reveals that she is a rabbit and a bear combined into one. This makes her a rabbear. Asakeno and Sosuke finally realize that Shino wasn't lying. The rabbear says she needs to punish them for breaking the school rules. There are no pets allowed on school grounds, and Sosuke is in his dog form. She conjures lightning to hit the trio, but they manage to escape the attack. Shino and Asakeno start to run away, but the Rebear chases after them with lightning strikes. Sosuke then speaks to the Rebear and apologizes for the intrusion. He changes into his human self to gain the trust of the Rebear. It appears that the Rebear is the said guard that protects the school. Sosuke tells the Rebear that they will not leave since they have found out that their friend is in good hands. The following day, Hamji is going to the lecture room when she runs into Ruri again. She tells Ruri about her roommate Suzu, but Ruri says she is supposed to have the room to herself. This confuses Hamaji, and she runs back to her room to find Suzu, but there are no traces of her. She only sees the Rebear on her bed. It dawns on her that the Rebear is the one who transforms into Suzu to talk to her. Later on, we find out that Shino wishes for Hamaji to have a friend who will keep her company. This is why the Rebear transformed into Suzu to make Shino's wish come true. Soon afterwards, Satomi tells Sosuke that he has the perfect job for him. He is to represent him at one of the churches for an anointing event. People who are suffering from a sickness will come for the program. Shino will also accompany him to the program. While they are at the program, a lady with golden eyes and hair shows up to sit beside Shino. The duo gets along very easily, even though this is the first time that they will be meeting. After some minutes, the lady decides to leave, but Shino gives him a church pendant before she leaves. He tells her that the divine being will grant her his forgiveness and protection. Later on, Asakeno is walking through the streets when he sees someone who looks like the man he has been looking for walk past him. He tries running after the man, but Genpachi, who is on a military patrol at the moment, blocks his path. That's true, Genpachi has been reinstated back into the military. Asakeno looks to his front but no longer finds any traces of the man he saw. That night, the lady with golden hair who came to the church earlier is seen working at an inn. Apparently, she is working as a pleasure worker. She is the favorite of all the men who patronize the inn. During one of her conversations, we find out that her name is Kohaku. When Asakeno returns home, he tells Kokonoi about the man he saw. Asakeno then says he was actually wrong to have gone after Sosuke before. He remembered giving the man he was looking for a scar through the face. He cut one of his eyes back then. The man had torn out his heart then, but he fought to stay alive. Later that night, Shino finds Asakeno practicing his sword skills in the yard. He is very handy with the sword, and he offers to teach Shino, but he refuses. Asakeno then asks Sosuke if he has any brothers. Sosuke says he has no idea because he doesn't have any memories of his childhood again. He also does not remember his mother telling him about a brother. Asakeno then says he will be justified if he cuts down the man he has been looking for. The man looks exactly like Sosuke, and this is the reason Asakeno had to confirm first. Shino notices that there is a strange aura coming from Asakeno's body. Kokonoi shows up at the same time. Shino touches Asakeno's chest before touching Kokonoi's chest before making his confirmation. He realizes that Kokonoi has no heart because she gave her heart to Asakeno. Kokonoi reveals that she saved Asakeno by giving him her heart. He was barely alive when she found him. He no longer has his heart, but he was still holding on to life. This is the reason Kokono decided to save him. She is the demon princess after all. Asakeno is also with the wisdom gem. In the next scene, Kohaku is getting ready for her next customer when she realizes that her sickness is getting severe. She has started coughing out red liquid to show how far she has gone. Meanwhile, Satomi sends Sosuke and Shino 
Asakeno to an old church that needs help. Kohaku is struggling inside her room when the man whom Asakeno is looking for enters the room. He offers Kohaku the chance to live if she gives him her golden eyes. Kohaku realizes that the man looks like Sosuke, but he is different from him with the type of vibe he gives off. When Shino gets to the church, he gets scared of the two nuns that they find there and he runs away. Sosuke is left to attend to what the nuns want. Shino finds Kenpachi in town and decides to stay with him. The duo soon find Asakeno who is also walking through town. Just then, Murasame warns Shino of an impending danger. He says a shadow is approaching. Out of nowhere, the man whom Asakeno has been looking for shows up. Asakeno tries to attack him but finds it hard to move his body. It appears that time has stopped and no one is moving. The man walks past Asakeno and faces Shino. The man seems to know everything about Shino. He says some words to Shino that he remembers from his childhood times. After he says this, the man disappears and everything returns to normal. Genpachi is surprised that the man knows Shino, but Shino claims that he doesn't know the man and doesn't even have an idea where he came from. That night, Shino runs to Satomi's room to talk to him about the man he saw. Satomi then reveals that Sosuke has lost half of his soul. The man walking around is the other half of his soul. If Sosuke does doesn't reclaim his other half, his fragmented soul will eventually be drawn to the underworld. Satomi says Shino's strong desire for Sosuke to remain among the living is what is binding his soul to his body. After his discussion with Satomi, Shino goes to the church to fetch Sosuke. Sosuke says there is a lot of work to do at the church, and that is the reason he hasn't left. Shino decides not to tell Sosuke about everything he learned that day. Meanwhile, Asakeno has left the inn in search of the man. Kokonoi tries telling him that he cannot hunt down a shadow, but he won't listen. As Sosuke and Shino leave the church, Shino makes the determination that he will find Sosuke's other half, which is the shadow. On the other hand, it turns out that Kohaku has offered one of her eyes for the shadow. The Shadow can be seen sitting on a rooftop looking at Asakeno as he looks for him. He is pretty confident that Asakeno will never find him. He is merely a shadow after all. There is also a woman with the shadow on the roof. From their discussion, it seems Shadow has known Shino since he was a kid. Up next, Asakeno grabs Shino and asks if he knows the shadow, but he says no. The shadow might know everything about him, but he has no idea who the shadow is, even though he has the same appearance as Sosuke. Shino later finds out that Asakeno also has the same birthmark that he and the rest of the boys have. He has this mark on his chest. It seems the mark indicates those who have the gem with them. Sosuke and Shino get to the church where Sosuke is making repairs to find Kohaku waiting for Shino. Kohaku and Shino sit down for a discussion. She reveals the type of job she engages in. She then tells Shino that she has a family family waiting for her at home. She has kids and a husband, she says. After telling Shino all of this, she leaves. After her departure, the nuns tell Shino that she is lying to him. Kohaku doesn't have a family waiting for her because she was sold to the brothel at age 8. She is from up north, the nuns say. Shino starts to wonder if Kohaku is the princess, Sai who was held hostage by the bandits some years back. Meanwhile, Kohaku is seen discussing with the son of the owner of the establishment. The man, Shoichi, comes to visit her because he hears that she has pink eyes. Kohaku has covered her missing eye with her hair. The man notices that Kohaku is engrossed with Satomi, and he wonders if this is because of what happened to her village back then. Someday, Days later, Satomi comes to visit Shino at the church, where he and Sosuke are working. He brings some parcels for them. Just as Satomi leaves the church, Shoichi is passing around the area and he spots Satomi. Satomi enters into his car and drives off before Shoichi can get to him. Shoichi approaches Shino to ask him how close he is to Satomi. He reveals that Satomi is his guardian and that's all. Shoichi then hands him some cake that was baked by Kohaku and sent to him. Shino leaves the cake under a tree with a letter, telling Sosuke that the cakes belong to him. Shoichi takes Shino to see Kohak. Kohaku is surprised when she sees Shino. She never expected Shoichi to bring Shinho to the brothel. Shoichi then reveals the real reason he brought Shino. He plans to hold Shino hostage to get Satomi to apologize for what he did to Kohaku's village. Kohaku says she doesn't want any apology, but Shoichi insists. Apparently, he is in love with Kohaku, and he believes that Kohaku's heart will forever be frozen if she doesn't get an apology and closure for what happened to her village. He once proposed to Kohaku, but she rejected him. Shoichi brings out a gun with the intent of eliminating Shino to punish Satomi, but Kohaku drags the gun with him. However, Shoichi ends up firing the gun and it hits Shino in the neck. He falls to the ground, but Murasame manifests out of anger and consumes Shoichi. Kohaku is shocked to see this. One of the attendants enters the room to check on Kohaku but finds Shino in a pool of his own blood. The matter is reported to the military. Genpachi is the responding officer on the scene. He holds Shino in his hands and asks Kohaku for the details of the event. Genpachi can see that the wound has closed up but Shino is not breathing and has no pulse either. He takes Shino away and orders Kohaku to stay away from her. Satomi learns of this 
this through his dog spirit, and he intercepts Genpachi on the way. He takes them to the Kenro Hotel. Sosuke and the others soon join them there. Genpachi asks Sosuke if Shino is like them, and he says no. He says Shino's situation is far more terrifying and cruel. Shino is laid on the bed to wait for Murasame to do his thing. Minutes later, Shino comes back to life, and everyone is relieved. He woke up hungry, and the first thing he demanded was food. Shino doesn't look any worried that he almost died, and this prompts Sosuke to slap him because he was already worried about him. Sosuke leaves in anger. After his departure, Satomi tells Shino that the dog spirit has created a barrier around the room, and he won't be able to leave in the meantime. Shino opens his shirt to find out that Murasami is visible all over his body. Later on, Sosuke finds Kohaku praying inside the church, and he assures her that Shino is fine. Kohaku is happy to hear this, and she finally decides to leave. As she leaves, the two nuns tell Sosuke to stay away from Kohaku because her soul has already been severed from this world. The only thing keeping her alive is her strong desire. On the other hand, Shino is seen panting in the bathroom as water rushes down on his head from the shower. He is burning up and is scared that he is gradually becoming a monster. Satomi finds Shino inside the bathroom. Murasami is angry because he still wants to feast more. Shino lost so much blood and Murasami wants everything back. One life will not be enough to satisfy him. Shino grabs Satomi and starts to consume red liquid from his body. Satomi's dog spirit wants to intervene, but Satomi stops him. He considers the feeding of Murasami as one of his duties. At the same time, Kohaku is in pain. She feels her throat getting drier to the extent that it now burns. She starts to wonder what creature she is becoming. Kohaku manages to pick herself up and get to the inn. She meets her friend Chitose waiting for her. Chitose has been the only person person who has been good to Kohaku since her arrival at the establishment. Chitose tells Kohaku to enter her room and rest very well in preparation for tomorrow's tasks. As Kohaku is about to enter her room, her throat starts burning up again, causing her to fall to the ground. It's as if she is starving. Chitose gets close to her to find out what is going on, but this turns out to be a grave mistake for her. The monstrous urge takes over Kohaku and she tears apart her good friend without even realizing it. The next day, Kanami and the foxes take a change of clothes to Satomi at the hotel. Upon entering, they are surprised to see the position they find Satomi. His his whole body is bloodied, but he seems fine. Shino, on the other hand, is sleeping, but he is transformed into what is supposed to be his actual body. He now looks like an 18-year-old teenager rather than the kid he once looked like. Meanwhile, Kohaku has woken up in her room and she is horrified to find out what she has done. Later on, Genpachi and Kobungo visit the Kenro Hotel too. Genpachi tells Satomi that he has made some investigation concerning Kohaku. Apparently, she is from the same village where Princess Sai got kidnapped. He then adds that Chitose's body has been found at the inn, and Kohaku is nowhere to be found. Kobungo decides to take a peek at Shino, and he is surprised at what he found. He quickly gets Genpachi out of there before he lays his eyes on Shino. Shino is Genpachi's type, he says. Elsewhere, Kohaku has made it to the church where Susoke is working. She stands at the entrance of the church while she talks to Susoke. Susoke knows that something is wrong with Kohaku because she looks bloodied. She tells Susoke that she has started remembering all of her past that she has forgotten before. All this started when she met Shino. Susoke realizes that Shino must have been the one who granted her the wish to remember her past, because he thinks that is what is best for her. Back at the hotel, Shino wakes up and talks about going to the inn because Satomi is going there. Satomi tells him that he cannot go because his powers have started to showcase, and it would be dangerous if the powers manifest just anywhere. In essence, Satomi is just trying to tell him to hide himself in the meantime because his appearance is different. Shino then says he will go to the church where Susoke is working instead. At the church, Susoke is about to go near Kohaku when he realizes that she already has wings emerging from her body. Moments later, Satomi shows up at the church. He asks Kohaku what her wish is. She reveals that she once had a family back in the village and wanted to know why Satomi didn't save them. Satomi informs her that everyone in the village was already dead when he got there. Kohaku has already been sold to the brothel, and this is the reason she wasn't in the village at that time. Kohaku then says she also wanted to see the face of the person who was unable to save her family. Just then, her wings finally emerge from her back. Shino shows up at the same time, and Kohaku is shocked to find out that he is now different. Shino apologizes for giving her the wish to make her remember her past. He never thought this would bring her pain. Shino summons his sword so he can finally put Kohaku out of her misery. He goes close to Kohaku and tells her that she is not a monster, but a pretty angel. With this, Shino ends her misery. Later on, Susoke finds Shino under the tree where he is sitting. Susoke wants him to visit Hamaji and show her his new appearance, but he says he will visit her later. Susoke leaves to fetch tea. He comes back to find out that Shino has gone back to his usual kid stature. Up next, the elders of the church have learned about Shino. They called Satomi to a meeting and ordered him to summon Shino to their presence. They are already referring to Shino as the ageless immortal. On the other hand, Shino is still recovering from the recent stress that he passed through over the last 
past couple of days. Shino later wakes up and decides to take a stroll through the town. He runs into Sosuke's shadow in the process of this. The shadow drags him into an alley to talk to him. The shadow tells Shino that he is also the same person as Sosuke. It's just that they have separated. He tells Shino something that only Sosuke would have known. It dawns on Shino that Shadow actually has Sosuke's memories too. He then reveals that he is stealing other people's body parts because Sosuke is with everything. He stole Kohaku's eye even though he didn't get the chance to steal the other before Shino took care of it. He stole Kaseno's heart and there are other things that he still needs before he can say he is complete. Shadow hugs Shino and puts his hand in his pocket, but Shino doesn't realize this. Later on, Shino finds Sosuke and he asks him about the same memory Shadow told him. Shino thinks Sosuke won't remember, but to his surprise, Sosuke remembers it and this makes him very emotional. The duo gets to the hotel and they learn from the foxes that some people have come from the church. They came to take Shino, but they didn't meet him, and Kaname chased them away. The foxes tell Sosuke and Shino that Satomi is at the church headquarters. The duo soon realizes that the church might want to grab Hamaji and use her to draw Shino in. Shino promises to deal with them if they should lay a hand on Hamaji. Unknown to them, Hamaji is at the church headquarters already. Soon afterward, Shino and Sosuke learn of this and they head to the church directly. Satomi's spirit dog, Yatsufusa, comes to join them there. Yat informs Shino that Satomi and Hamaji are inside the church. There is a barrier around the church preventing them from entering but Murasami breaks through the barrier pretty easily. Those inside the church realize that the barrier is broken. The head of the church, Master Finnegan, laughs when this happens. He hopes that the next events will prove to be entertaining. Shino tells Sosuke to find Hamaji while he finds Satomi. Meanwhile, Kanami is with Hamaji when the barrier gets taken down. He realizes that Shino and Sosuke have come for her. He says there might be a bit of a problem with this. He is confident that the church's guardian angel will make an appearance. She is very dangerous to the extent that even the divine being fears her. Her name is Lilith. At that moment, Shino enters the church, but he runs into Lilith. Lilith attacks, but he blocks her powerful attack with his sword. Lilith is blown away when she sees this. She doesn't expect someone to be able to stand up to her. Shino tries to escape, but she holds him with a bind magic. However, Shino breaks free from the bind as well. He creates a smoke screen that allows him to escape from Lilith. He finds Satomi after he escapes from Lilith. Satomi is impressed that Shino escaped from Lilith unscathed. Shino, on the other hand, doesn't count his escape as unscathed because he is breathing heavily. He thought he was going to die when he was facing Lilith. Lilith soon finds Satomi, and she asks him if he has seen Shino, but Satomi says no. Satomi is able to mask Shino's scent with that of Yat. Thanks to Yat, Lilith is unable to figure out that Shino is hiding beneath Satomi's robe. Master Finnegan shows up and tells Lilith not to stress herself again. He is very sure that their paths will cross again. With this, Shino and Sosuke are able to get Hamaji away from the church. Later that night, the boys gather at the inn. They finally figure out that they all have the gem. Shino enters the room to find out that his gem is gone. It was inside his pocket, but he could no longer find it. It finally dawns on him that Shadow was the one who stole it. This was what he stole when he dipped his hand into his pocket. As the season comes to an end, the voice of a woman appears and narrates how the eight gems came to be. She narrates that long ago, Tamazusa plunged the country into the Dark Ages. Princess Fuse gathered eight men to fight along Alongside her in a bid to defeat Tamazusa, but they all perished after they won the battle. Fuse sealed Tamazusa's soul which had turned into an evil spirit inside her body before eliminating herself. When she did this, eight gems that were infused with Fuse's wish flew to the men's next lives. Once the eight individuals gather together in their future lives, she shall come back to life and grant their wishes. The person doing this narration is none other than the woman who was with Shadow on the rooftop. After the events of the first season, Master Finnegan comes to visit Satomi and the boys. This is an unexpected visit from someone as respectable as himself. It is quite obvious that he wants something. He tells Satomi that he ordered some dolls and they are yet to come. He wants Satomi to retrieve the dolls. Satomi tells Genpachi, Shino, and Sosuke to get the dolls on his behalf. As the trio makes their way to the mountainside where the doll makers, Inumura, live, they pass through a forest of cherries. They see a man sitting under one of the trees and they ask him for directions concerning their destination. He points to the house they are going to and Sosuke thanks him for his help. The trio gets to the house and they are welcomed by Inumura's daughter, Hinaginu. She takes them into the house to see her brother Daikaku. Daikaku welcomes them coldly when he sees the trio and realizes their purpose. Daikaku informs the trio that the dolls are not ready because their father disappeared before finishing the 
dolls. They've searched everywhere but haven't found him. Daikaku stands up to leave, and Shino berates him for not being able to finish the task in his father's stead. Daikon gives Shino a death stare before retiring to his chambers. Hinaginu tells the trio that they are welcome to stay for a while. Shino is excited because he will get to eat lots of beef. That night, Daikaku tries working on the dolls, but he keeps failing. He wonders why this is so. He knows his father would have encouraged him if he had been around to see him. Hinaginu sees him where he is thinking about all of this. Daikaku asks Hina if everything happening to them is so because of the man who came before their father's disappearance. Apparently, Daikaku's real father came to the house one day. He realized that Daikaku was old enough and he was already making money for Inumura. He now wants his son back because of the money he can make from Daikaku. Inumura begs him to leave and gives him some dolls as payment. That night, Daikaku suffers from a weird dream. The following morning, Shino comes to Daikaku's workshop to check on him. Daikaku complains that he has been failing to make dolls no matter what he does, and he doesn't know the reason why. His father could work with dolls perfectly. Shino sees a cat doll inside the room and plays with it before leaving. He decides to take a stroll through the forest. Suddenly, he gets hit by a ball in the head. He looks back to see that a boy in kimono is the culprit. The boy runs away before he can challenge him. Shino sees a shed on the outskirts of the compound. There are a bunch of dolls inside the shed. He sees a particular doll that triggers his memory. He realizes that the face of the woman he is looking at is the one who eliminated him and his friends back in the village. As he tries to wrap his head around this, Hina enters the room. Shino begs her to tell him everything he knows about the doll, and Hina says she doesn't remember much because her father made the doll when she was younger. However, she does know that her father spent so much time on the doll. He devoted himself to creating the doll perfectly, and everyone who has seen it has been marveled. After Shino leaves the shed, he makes his way to Daikaku's workshop again. He shows him the ball that hit him in the head. Daikaku remembers giving the type of ball to a cat he once owned. He says he didn't name the cat, so he doesn't remember one. The cat came to him one day, and when he treated the cat well, the cat never left again. The cat was always by his side. Then suddenly one day, the cat left and never came. He believed the cat had gone to die somewhere, and he never bothered to look for the cat. Once he is done with the story, he asks Shino to grant him a favor. He tells Shino to sit down and model for him while he works on the dolls. Later that night, the young boy with the ball is seen singing in the forest, where the cherries are blooming. Just then, one of the tree branches fell off. At the same time, Daikaku remembers a memory that has been lost. He realizes that he was murdered. Shino, Genpachi, and Sosuke realize that there is a sudden burst of wind. They get outside, and they are approached by the boy with the ball. He screams at them to leave Daikaku alone. He then transforms into a cat. Shino is surprised to see that the young boy is the cat that left Daikaku. To intimidate the cat, Genpachi transforms into his demon self. The cat is about to run away when another black cat, Keide, shows up to scold Genpachi for picking on the small cat. They are in the middle of this when the man they saw under the cherry tree shows up. He informs the trio that he is the Hinazuka family's guardian deity. The black cat is his spirit cat. The man's name is Nachi Hinazuka and he belongs to one of the four houses of the sacred beasts. They ask Nachi why he is at the house, but he refuses to divulge his purpose. He claims that his reasons are best known to him. Shino feels the weird air in the atmosphere, and he is able to figure out that the cherry trees are actually a barrier. He wonders why there is a barrier around the house. Inside the house, Daikaku is gradually getting his memories back. Shino follows the cat into the cherry forest. Shino knows that he is the one who erected the barrier, and he wonders why. He tries asking him why he created the barrier, but the cat won't talk. Shino wants to know why he cares so much about Daikaku and why he would want to protect him at all costs. The cat shouts at Shino and reveals that Daikaku gave him a name. Shino is surprised to hear this because Daikaku has no memory of him giving the cat a name. One of the tree branches falls off again. Shino realizes that something is wrong with the tree. He brings out his sword and cuts down all of the cherry trees. The cat protests about this, but he informs the cat that all the trees are dead already. Sooner or later, everything would have rotten off. By cutting down the trees, the barrier he erected has disappeared. The cat cries out that the person he is trying to stop from coming in will now have full access to the compound and Daikaku. At that moment, a shadowy figure appears in the distance. Back in the house, Daikaku now has full access to his memories. He remembers that their father never went missing. He passed away instead and his biological father showed up right after this. Daikaku's biological father wanted all of Inumura's dolls, but Daikaku refused. The moment Daikaku turned his back on the man, he pushed his sword into Daikaku. He doesn't mind terminating his son as long as he can get the dolls. As Daikaku lies in his own pool of blood, he starts thinking of how he doesn't want to die. Hina was in the other room and she was also having an asthma attack at the same time. The cat showed up at the right time, and Daikaku wished that the cat could help his sister. He also wanted the cat to protect the dolls from his real father. As he thinks of all of this, he starts to lose his grip on life. The cat drops a gem in his front with the tag, Gratitude. Daikaku died, but he later woke up, and when he did, his wounds were gone. 
he also found the lifeless body of his biological father on the ground. Now in the present day, a skeleton emitting a dark aura begins to approach the compound. With everything the skeleton is saying, Daikaku is able to figure out that the figure is Inumura. Genpachi offers to chase away the ghost, but Daikaku says there is no need for that. He knows why he is there, and he decides to meet the ghost halfway. The cat also shows up, and Daikaku is glad that the cat always appears at the right time. Daikaku starts to converse with the ghost. It appears that Inumura was not ready to die yet when he did. Daikaku is about to trade places with the ghost when the cat jumps in and consumes the ghost, but he also dies in the process. The cat died protecting Daikaku, and Daikaku mentions his name for the first time. He calls the cat Noro. The following day, Shino finds a way to convince Daikaku to continue working on the dolls. Meanwhile, Satomi is getting worried that Shino is not back yet. Konami makes fun of Satomi because he cares so much about Shino. He wonders what sort of relationship he has with the boy. Later on, Nachi tells the group that he was the first person person who Finn sent to recover the dolls. When he got to the compound, Katie started acting weird, and this is the reason he has been stuck there for the past six months. Cade didn't want to go back to the capital because of Yacht and the foxes. He likes the peace and quiet he is enjoying at the mountainside. In the middle of the conversation, Yacht shows up. This indicates that Satomi is around. Shino leaves to intercept Satomi halfway. He tells Satomi that he has something to tell him. He takes Satomi to the shed where he sees the doll. Satomi realizes that Shino is starting to remember things he shouldn't. He swipes his hand across Shino's face and Shino Shino passes out. When he wakes up, he doesn't remember anything about the doll or what he wants to tell Satomi again. Satomi carries Shino on his back and takes him to the compound. The moment Daikaku sees this, he is filled with inspiration for the type of doll to create. While doing this, he sees the gratitude gem in his possession. Satomi and Nachi visit the shed to look at the doll that caught Shino's attention. Satomi says the doll is a representation of Princess Fuse. She is the legendary Princess Priestess. She is now a symbol of disaster, and this is the reason Satomi sealed Shino's memories. The following day, Daikaku is already done with the dolls. He gives Satomi the doll that has been wrapped in a parcel so no one will see the image except Finn himself. As the group is about to leave, Daikaku mentions the fact that he will come to the capital soon enough. He is planning to move to the capital too. Shino sees a faint image of Noro sitting on Daikaku's shoulder. Shino realizes that Noro will always be there to protect Daikaku. When Finn receives the doll and opens it, we find out that Daikaku recreated a doll to match the moment Satomi carried Shino on his back. Up next, Satomi gives Sosuke and Shino different tasks to attend to. Shino is to visit the church and teach the children who attend the church how to read and write. He doesn't want to do this and would rather switch places with Sosuke. However, he changes his mind when he realizes that Sosuke will be dealing with rats. He has no choice but to attend to the kids. He gets to the church and gathers the children to teach them, but the children are rebellious and won't listen to him most especially, a boy known as Atsushi. He is the ringleader of the group. The kids run out of the room, and Shino doesn't even bother chasing after them. Just then, he feels someone touch him, and when he looks to his side, he sees a kid, Kaho, talking to him. Kaho's eyes look different, and she wants Shino to read her a storybook. Later that day, Shino tells Sosuke about Kaho and how her eyes are different. Sosuke then tells Shino that Kaho is blind. She was born blind, but she has been engrossed with fairy tales lately. Sosuke is glad that Kaho has warmed up to Shino. Shino promises to get another version of the book because the one she gave him has some pages missing. Shino can't wait to read the book to her. Sosuke will be spending the night at the church, so Shino will be heading home alone. Shino decides to stay at Kabungo's family inn known as the Konaya. On his way to the inn, he walks by a usual stall where he buys snacks, Daikokudo. The owner stops him so he can help taste the new recipe that he is trying. Shino tastes the dish and points out what it lacks and what would have made it better. The next day, Shino sits under the tree to read the novel to Kaho. After reading the novel, Kaho asks Shino how to remember someone when she cannot see what they look like. This is a big question for Shino, and he finds it hard to answer it. He thought about the question throughout the night, and he even tells Sosuke about it. Sosuke tells Shino that Kaho was dumped in front of the brothel when she was a kid. There is no way for her to have a memory of her parents, or anyone. The following day, Shino and Kaho are under the tree when Daikoku's owner shows up. The old man has followed Shino's instructions, and he wants him to try it out. Shino does this, and he is amazed by the sweetness of the meal. The old man then begs Shino to write out more recipes recipes for him, and Shino does this. The old man gives Shino the opportunity to name the dish because he is the one to thank for it. The old man thanks him for his help and leaves. After the man's departure, Kaho requests that Shino write down her name so she can feel it. Shino does this and also explains the meaning of the name to her, and this excites her. They are in the middle of this when the rest of the kids show up. They want Shino to write down their name also and oblige. However, Atsushi, who is a troublemaker, steps on the writing, and this prompts Shino to slap him across the face for being rude and inconsiderate. He starts crying loudly 
loudly, and this attracts Sosuke. He comes out to ask what the problem is, but Shino decides not to give an explanation. He takes Kaho's hand and leads her away. On his way back home, Shino branches at Daiko but doesn't see the old man. He only sees his daughter and wife. He asks about the man, but they run into the store without answering. Later on, Sosuke, Asakeno, and Kobungo are seen having a discussion. They talk about how close Shino has been to the Daikoku stall owner. Just then, Kobungo's mother enters the fray to tell them that the man passed away a month ago. After this, the store starts to boom because of the recipes he left behind. In the next scene, Asakeno finds Sosuke roasting potatoes for Kaho. After Kaho's departure, Sosuke touches the fire he was roasting with and doesn't feel like touching anything is wrong with him. Asakeno drags his hand out of the fire and he is surprised by this. Sosuke then reveals that he stopped feeling pain five years ago. Even when he is injured, the injury tends to heal in a day or less. Later on, Kaho comes to call Sosuke and tells him that the nuns are looking for him. Kaho touches his hand and feels how cold it is. Some days later, Sosuke arranges a feast for the kids at the church. This is because Kaho and Atsushi's birthdays are that month. While everyone is eating outside, Shino decides to teach Kaho some words inside the house. Atsushi soon comes in with slices of cake for the two. He then tells Shino that he would like to know the meaning of his own name too. Shino obliges and tells him that his name translates to a considerate person. Shino teases Atsushi that he is not behaving like his name. Atsushi somehow apologizes for his behavior. After the feast, Sosuke and Shino leave and all the kids come out to say goodbye to them. Kaho is the last to leave outside and as she is about to leave, she runs into Sosuke's shadow. Kaho realizes that he has the same voice as Sosuke but his hands are warmer. Sosuke's shadow then introduces himself as Ao. Soon afterward, Nachi returns to the capital and he visits Satomi's chambers. He tells Satomi what he came across when returning to the capital. He says there is someone going about eliminating spirits, and this has happened at a certain village. The culprit is said to wield a sword and has golden eyes too. Just then, Shino burst into the room to hear the story very well. He already knows who the culprit is, and he wants to know more. Kaname says he has heard about a spirit hunting incident in a village known as Musashi. The village is already falling into ruins because of this. It is said that their regional deity was slain. After this, Shino decides to visit the village because he believes that Ao will still be there. At the same time, Genpachi has been sent to the village by the military to conduct an investigation concerning the killings that have been happening there. He is taken to the shrine of the deity, where he meets with a lady, Yana. Yana tells him about the deity that is present in the village. The deity has two lives and one is sealed at the shrine. Shortly afterward, Shino, Sosuke, and Kobungo arrive at the village. Genpachi welcomes the trio at the train station and promises to brief them on the situation. Before they leave the station, Shino tells Genpachi not to tell Sosuke about Ao and the gem that is with him. As they leave the station, Genpachi tells them about what he has learned. He says there have been eight unusual deaths in the last one week. The people are blaming this on the regional deity. The name of the deity is Yana, which is the same as the lady at the shrine. Princess Yana, as the lady is called, is the guardian of the shrine. Genpachi takes them to the hotel where they will be staying and continues with his explanation. He reveals that Yana has two guardians staying with her at the shrine. She has never left the shrine and the two, Takanobu and Saki, attend to all of her needs. They won't be able to see Yana until next week. He reveals that Yana's dog died that morning too. The group then decides to infiltrate the shrine to be able to learn more. Sosuke transforms into his dog form and enters the shrine. When Yana sees Sosuke, she welcomes her with open hands because she doesn't want to be alone. She receives comfort from Sosuke being around because her dog Kuma died that morning. She opens her leg to show Sosuke the Yana's seal on her leg. She reveals that she is at the shrine because of that. The following morning, Shino decides to search for Ao. He knows that he is somewhere inside the village and he needs to find him. At the same time, some villagers are causing a ruckus at the shrine. They want Yana to do something about the killings that have been happening in the village. Yana is sad when sees this. She tells Sosuke that she is always treated like she is not a human. No one wants to know what she is feeling or what she wants. The only two people who care about her are Tabanoku and Saki. She falls to her knees crying and just then, the seal on her leg comes off and flies away. The seal goes after the villagers who have come to cause a ruckus at the shrine. The seal terminates the group leaving only one behind. On the other hand, Shino has finally found Ao inside the forest where he is hiding. Shino is still busy discussing with him when Asakeno shows up. He has been trailing Ao too and he wants to enact his revenge on him. The two attack each other but Shino tries to break them apart. Ayo hits Shino in the head to knock him out. After he is knocked out, Ao goes after Asakeno and cuts him in the chest. Asakeno staggers and falls to the ground. He berates Ao for taking everything away from him. Ao retorts and says he should be the one saying that because Asakeno's parents were the ones who took everything from him. He should be one to inherit the sword that Asakeno currently wields, he says. Ao promises to take back everything that has been taken away from him. He carries Shino and leaves. Asakeno makes it to the village to tell the rest of the group what happened. He finds Sosuke, but he finds out Sosuke is not at the inn. He is at the shrine with Yana. While at the shrine, 
Sosuke finds out that anytime the seal leaves Yana's body, she freezes and has no idea what has been done. The seal returns after the deed has been done, and Sosuke can clearly smell the strong stench of blood. Just then, Yana is informed that the actual owner of Sosuke has come to take him. Sosuke runs to the gate, where he finds Kobungo waiting for him. Sosuke is shocked when he finds out that Shino has been taken. He is more surprised that Shino has been hiding the existence of Ao from him. On the other hand, Shino wakes up inside a shed in the middle of the forest. Ao reveals that he was the one who eliminated the other regional deity's vessel, so he could take control of the deity. He opens his shirt to show Shino the seal of the deity that is on his arm. Meanwhile, Sosuke is already on his way to Shino. Asakeno has also given him the katana with him because he now believes that Sosuke is the rightful owner. Ao continues with the revelation of his plan. He says he wants to take the other seal that is with Yana too. He wants the deity's full power to awaken. He believes that the deity is exhausted from being in the shrine for long. Just then, Sosuke shows up and asks him what his plan is after obtaining the power he is talking about. A fight soon breaks out between the two. Shino tries to stop Sosuke from fighting Ao because they don't truly know what will happen if they kill Ao. Sosuke might end up dying, he says. Shino tries breaking the two apart, but he is unsuccessful with this because Ao tells him to choose one of them, which he finds hard to do. He thinks to himself that there is no way he will choose either of them because the two of them are one. Ao cuts Sosuke's arm, which leaves a deep cut. Shino is infuriated by this, and Murasame's aura emanates from his body in reaction to this. The seal on Ao's arm also reacts to this, and it forces itself out of Ao's arm. The Yana transforms into his usual self and stands above the shed. The Yana looks like a dragon, and a beautiful one at that. The transformation of the Yana breaks apart the duo's fight. Back at the shrine, Princess Yana is walking through the hallway when she hears Takanobu and Saki talking about how the seal on her leg is responsible for the killings that have been happening in the village. She is blown away by this because she had no idea that Yana was responsible for something of that magnitude. She runs out of the building and runs into Genpachi. Now in the forest, the other Yana informs Sosuke and Shino that he and his other self are originally one but humans split them apart. One was locked in a deer and left to roam the forest while the other was sealed in a human and locked in the shrine. They have not been able to leave because of this. They are supposed to be resting, but they cannot because of this. Yana says his other half is crying and he can feel it. Now at the shrine, Princess Yana says she wants to die because of what the Yana inside of her body had been doing. After Shino and Sosuke are done hearing the Yana, Shino absorbs the Yana into his other arm. They return to the inn to find out that Sosuke's injury is more severe than they initially thought. Meanwhile, Ao has now revealed his plan. He plans to absorb as much spirit as he can until he has enough power that is equal to that of Murasame. That night, Genpachi informs Shino that he would like him to escort him to the shrine the next day. There is something that he wants him to attend to. Meanwhile, Takanobu and Saki are worried that they will not be able to present Yana for her oracle event, which is slated for the following day. She has been moody since she found out about everything. Princess Yana lies down in her room and thinks about how people only come to the shrine to see her, because of the deity in her body. The following day, the villagers are already gathered to consult the oracle. Moments later, Shino arrives at the shrine. He is still speaking with Takanobu, when Saki comes running outside to inform him that something is wrong with Princess Yana. Shino accompanies them to the princess's chambers to find out that most of her body is covered in something that appears to be scales. This shows that she is dying already. Shino faces her and asks her what her wish is. She is about to say what her heart desires, but she changes her mind again. She tells Takanobu and Saki that she is still ready to carry out her duties. Takanobu and Saki beg Princess Yana not to give up because they consider her as their sibling. They have no one else aside from her. Shino tells Genpachi that there is nothing he can do and unless Princess Yana makes a wish of her own. Sosuke understands that it must have been hard for her to say she wants to become a normal person. She has served as Yana's guardian since she was born. Princess Yana leaves the room and heads for the gate where the villagers are waiting for her to grant their wishes. When she gets to the gate, some of the villagers start to shout at her. They want her to do something about the killings rather than standing in front of them and granting wishes. The Yana in her body is about to go rampage again, when Genpachi transforms into his demon self and whisks the princess away from the people. He takes her to the sky and asks her what her wishes. Princess Yana finally reveals that she wants to become just Yana. This is exactly what Genpachi is looking for. He takes Princess Yana to Shino because he can clearly hear what her wish is. With this, Shino says he will grant her wish. He releases the Yana in his body, and the Yana in Princess Yana's body also gives way. The two Yanas join together and reunite after a long while. The scale on Princess Yana disappears after this. The newly reunited Yana then reveals that they are exhausted and would like to sleep in a new vessel for now. They want Shino to be their new vessel, but he tells them that he already has Murasami. Just then, Shino calls out Ao, and he tells Yana to make Ao his vessel. Ao accepts the task and says he will make Shino repay the favor one day. 
Ao threatens to eliminate Sosuke, but Shino lets him know that he will never let that happen. Sosuke finally learns that Ao has stolen his gem from Shino, and this is the reason he has been hunting him down. After everything has been settled, Shino asks Kobungo for a favor. He wants Takanobu, Saki, and Yana to start working at the inn so they can start a new life outside the village. Kobungo accepts this and says he already sent a letter to his mother regarding that. Up next, Shino is having a discussion with Hamaji, Sosuke, Kaname, and the foxes about how Satomi scolded him because of the gem when Nachi entered the room. He asks them if they have seen his spirit cat, Katie. No one has seen the cat, and he is also refusing to heed Nachi's calls. Nachi needs to be somewhere with Satomi, so he pays Shino to help him look for Kade. Shino learns that Katie likes the old town, so that will be the first place he will look at. Meanwhile, Katie is seen strolling through the old town. He is walking on the roof to avoid detection. He spots the demon princess, Kokonoi, and he quickly hides from her. It seems he has offended the princess before and he is still avoiding her. Kade is touring the streets in his smaller form to avoid drawing attention to himself. He soon runs into a shadow eater who without hesitation consumes Kaidi's shadow. Genpachi finds Kaidi who is busy shouting at the the Shadow Eater for what he did. Later on, Shino visits the Konaya, and he finds Kaede with Kobungo's mom. She tells Shino that Genpachi found the cat and dropped it with her. Shino is happy to hear this because the cat is exactly what he was looking for. He thanks the woman for accepting Takanobu, Saki, and Yana to work for her. After the woman's departure, Shino serves himself and Murasame a nice dish but only gives Kaede a fish. Kaede is forced to complain before he gives him a chunk of meat. Kaede reveals that he left the manor because he is tired of the other spirits that are there. Chikage is there. The foxes are there, and even Yacht is there. He wants his own territory inside the manor, but for some reason he can't seem to choose where he wants. While they are in the middle of this conversation, Megu enters the room and bites Katie's tail. Kaidi gets extremely furious and he thinks of teaching Megu a lesson. He tries to transform into his huge self, but realizes that he cannot. He wonders why this is happening to him, and Shino says a shadow eater must have consumed his shadow. Kaidi remembers running into one earlier that day. He starts to panic that he will remain the way he is, but Shino tells him that his shadow will return to him on a full moon. Shino then tells Katie about the gems that he is looking for. Katie says he has a way of sensing the gems, but he can't do so when he is in his pony form. He is trying to get Shino to get him a solution real quick. Shino decides to take a stroll through town to see if he can find the gems. Kaidi thinks to himself about how strong Shino is for him to be harboring Murasame inside of him. He is already cursed with immortality. Kaidi wonders if Shino will not get sad when everyone he knows is dead. Meanwhile, Satomi is worried that Ao is getting stronger by the day. The more he defeats more spirits, the more he becomes stronger. To top it all, he is now with Sosuke's gem. Later that night, Shino and the boys gather at the inn to drink and have fun. They are in the middle of this when Daikaku shows up. He is finally moving to the capital with his sister. He wants his sister to attend a school in the capital. Katie then tells Shino that Daikaku has a gem with him too. Daikaku never knew the gem was something of importance. He was only carrying it around. It turns out that all the boys present in the room each have a gem. The boys present in the room are Shino, Sosuke, Genpachi, Kobungo, Asakeno, and Daikaku. Although Sosuke's gem is with Ao, Shino now has two gems left to look for. Four. Six of the eight gems are now accounted for. Later that night, Shino takes Kaidi outside the inn. The moon is out and this is enough for their shadows to be visible. He used himself as bait for the shadow eaters to show themselves. He then threatens them and asks them to return Kaidi's shadow to him. The shadow eaters quickly do as told to avoid being eradicated by Shino. With this, Kaidi will be able to return to his proper form. Shino informs Kaidi that he will continue to hunt for the other two gems. Shortly afterward, we find out that Nachi was not originally Kaidi's master. Nachi's older brother, Yuri was Katie's master, but Katie later switched to Nachi because Yuri doesn't believe in spirits and the like. He never for once paid attention to Kade. He was happy before Kade chose him, but he became silent after he was chosen by Katie. One day, Kade decided to leave Yuri. Not long after that, Yuri passed away. That night, Kade returns to the manor and he shows himself to Nachi. He brings up the subject of Yuri, but Nachi assures Katie that he knows the truth and he understands how he felt back then. He doesn't blame Katie for Yuri's death. Katie hears this and he becomes very comfortable with Nachi. He jumps on his lap and sits with him on the chair until the chair breaks apart. Part. Soon afterward, Dosetsu decides to visit the imperial capital. When he alights from the train, he finds someone to point him in the direction of the inn. Konaya. He gets to the inn while Shino and Sosuke are busy having a snowball fight. Shino is very happy to see Dosetsu and the Snow Princess. Shino sits down to discuss with the Snow Princess while Dosetsu tells the boys while he is at the capital. He reveals that he is in the city to find his sister, Mutsuki. They separated when they were younger. However, they have the same hair color, which is red. The boys offer to help out concerning this. They are willing to search for his sister. They think of searching through the Red District first. It is known that this is the place that children with no relatives go to. Meanwhile, Susoke is working at the church and Kaho is with him. Elsewhere, Hamaji is getting ready to go shopping with 
Yana. Yana is excited to see the town with Hamaji. Shortly afterward, Asakano and Kobungo decide to search through the Red District for any girl who is red-haired. As they walk through the street, they keep asking people if they know a red-haired girl who is between the ages of 15, 16. As they do this, a strange man wearing a hood appears and tells the two that he can help out. He introduces himself as Asin. Kabungo speaks his name, and this excites the man. He claims that he is a kindred spirit. He immediately says he will get on the task of finding the girl, but Kabungo says he never told him to do so. Just then, Asin flies away. Asakano hits Kabungo in the head and says Asin is a demon, and he might have just made a pact with him without realizing that. Asin starts going through town looking for the right girl. He leaves a trail of bodies in his search for the right girl. Meanwhile, Shino is now with Hamaji and Yana. As they walk through the street, Shino gets tired of the books he is carrying and decides to run by the dorm and drop them off before coming back to join them. On the other hand, Sosuke is still working at the church when Asin shows up and whisks Kaho away because she is red-haired. He gets to the top of a building and realizes that Kaho is not the person he is looking for. Kaho doesn't have a shred of fear in her because she can't even see Asin. This makes Asin curious and he starts a conversation with Kaho. During their conversation, Asin is able to figure out that someone powerful has given Keho's name meaning. Sosuke is running through the streets looking for Kaho when he runs into Shino. He tells Shino about this and Shino asks Murasami to search for Kaho. Without wasting time, Murasami finds Kaho. Shino gets there and angrily goes after Asin, but he manages to escape. Shino is glad that Kaho is safe and sound. Hamaji and Yana are still out shopping. She sees a store selling hairpins, and this reminds her of the hairpin she once gave her brother. The military is now aware of the murders that are happening in the town. Genpachi is able to figure out that all the murders have some in common. They all have red hair. Kabungo finds Genpachi and says everything happening might be his fault. He wants to track down Asin using his demon form, but he will stand out during the day. Genpachi says he has no choice but to wait till night. Shortly afterward, Destsu is walking through the streets when he is attacked by Asin because he is red-haired. Asin immediately realizes his mistake and retreats. He gets scared because he realizes that the Snow Princess is with Dosetsu. He is pondering over his mistake when he spots Hamaji. She looks perfect for the person he is looking for. She has red hair and she is the right age. He goes after Hamaji and he is about to grab her when Dosetsu and the Snow Princess intercept him. The Snow Princess is furious that Asin hurt Dosetsu. She freezes up Asin's arm and shatters it into pieces. However, he lets him escape with his life. After his departure, Dosetsu comes face to face with Hamaji. Without a doubt, he recognizes that Hamaji is his sister. At that same moment, Shino and Yana show up. Dosetsu asks Hamaji how she is related to Shino and she reveals that Shino is not his blood brother. They met 10 years ago when she was welcomed into Otsuka Village. Dosetsu tries talking to Hamaji, but she lies that she doesn't remember anything before Otsuka Village. She runs off after saying this. Shino is surprised that Dosetsu is not going after her when it is clear that Hamaji is his sister. Dosetsu says he is happy that he has found his sister, and he is even more happy that she is happy where she is. However, Shino disagrees with him and says he is supposed to talk to his sister. Dosetsu then remembers that the reason he asked the Snow Princess to save him was to see his sister again. He runs after Hamaji and stops her. He gives Hamaji the hairpin she gave him back then. He then reveals that he has always treasured the hairpin. He informs Hamaji that he is opening a shop in the capital so he can see Hamaji often. After saying this, Dosetsu leaves. With tears in her eyes, Hamaji informs Shino that she actually remembers that Dosetsu is her brother. But she didn't want to talk to him before because she thought she had forgotten the promise he made to her. Later that night, Kabungo changes into his demon form and tracks down Asin. He finds him where he is still complaining about losing an arm. Kabungo consumes him without hesitation as punishment for his crimes. The boys later gather at the inn to have fun. During this, they find out that Dosetsu also has a gem. This makes it seven gems in total that have been accounted for. Up next, Satomi informs Shino that a boy in Ikura village vanished a year ago when he went to the forest to get bellflower roots for his sick mother. The boy has returned and he remains as he was when he vanished. Satomi wants Shino to go to the village and check out the boy. Soon afterward, Shino and Sosuke make their way to the village. Shino is enrolled in the elementary school and the teacher tells the students that he is a transfer student from the imperial capital. Shino will be sitting close to the class prefect, Shinobu. Shino looks around and he sees the boy he came to look for sitting on the other side of the class. Shinobu notices that Shino has his eyes fixed on the boy and he tells him the boy's name which is Akihiko. Akihiko's hair is now white and he only takes to himself. Sosuke and Shino will be staying at the Kakia Inn. Tei is an old woman and she is the owner of the inn. Shinobu is Tei's grandson also. While in class, Shino notices flowers attaching themselves to the window side where Akihiko is sitting, but no one seems to see this except him. Upon getting home that day, Shino and Sosuke share what they have both learned during 
the day. Sosuke tells Shino that Tei warns him about the mountains. She claims that the mountains do take away kids. Now at Akihiko's house, his father is seen screaming at him because of his silence. His father is frustrated that he hasn't uttered a word since he returned. He doesn't eat either. The only thing he ingests is water. Akihiko remembers the day his mother was leaving for the clinic, and he regrets not telling his mother that he doesn't hate, but hates the sickness affecting her. The following day, Shino asks Shinobu why he doesn't want to leave Akihiko all by himself, and he says Akihiko tends to do weird things when left alone. Shinobu leaves for the diary room and Shino is left to take care of Akihiko. While they are sitting, plants suddenly sprout out of the ground and try to cover Akihiko, but he tells them that he cannot go with them and they disappear immediately. Later that day, the monk Chudai, who Shino and Sosuke came across on the train, arrives at the inn where they are staying. Chudai is shocked to find Sosuke and Shino at the inn. He immediately starts to tell Tei to get rid of the boys, but Tei says she cannot because they are there at Satomi's request. To frustrate Shino, Chudai starts to paste talismans all around the house. Shinobu sees Shino complaining and he tells him that Chudai is a good person because he once saved his life. Chudai still comes to visit because he is worried about him. Soon afterward, Akihiko's mother decides to leave the clinic to visit her son at home. She hasn't seen her son in a long time and she believes that it is long overdue already. Meanwhile, Shino and Sosuke are heading to the mountains. They ask Shinobu for directions to the mountains. Shino just tells Shinobu that he has something to check on the mountains. Soon afterward, Akihiko's mother arrives home and finds her son in the backyard. He is sitting alone in the cold. Shino, Sosuke, and Shinobu are also on their way to the mountains. Shino reveals that he is going there to check out the bell flowers because they do not bloom this time of the year. He believes that Akihiko went to get the flowers back then. He was trying to help his sick mother. The flowers are said to have healing effects for cough, and this must have been the reason he went for the flowers. Back in the village, Akihiko turns to face his mother and he finally utters some words when he sees his mother. He is very happy to see his mother and he hugs her tightly. Akihiko's father sees this, and he holds the two in his arms. Akihiko asks about his mother's illness and his mother replies that she is no longer sick. His mother says there is no need for him to get the flowers again. Now on the mountain, Shino, Sosuke, and Shinobu are surprised to find out that the bell flowers are blooming at that time of the year. They can hear the flowers saying that they have fulfilled their promise. At that same moment, Akihiko's body turns to dust while holding his mother. Shino, Sosuke, and Shinobu find Akihiko's body among the flowers. The flowers reveal that Akihiko's last wish was to send his mother flowers. After the events that happened to Akihiko, Shino and the other two boys return home. Shinobu goes to sleep but hasn't woken up since then. Shino and Sosuke want to wait for him to wake back up before returning to the Imperial capital. Shinobu has now been asleep for over a week. He finally wakes up and the first thing he says is that he is hungry. This is not new to Chudai and Tei because this isn't the first time Shinobu will be sleeping quite abnormally. However, this is the first time he has slept so long. Shinobu asks about Akihiko and Chudai tells him that he has been buried. Shinobu leaves his room to take a bath in the spring. He finds Shino taking his bath too. Shinobu is finally happy to be taking a bath after a week. During their conversation, Shino says he has learned from the schoolgirls that Shinobu once went missing like Akihiko too. Shinobu confirms this and says he is actually 22 years old. This comes as a shock to Shino because Shinobu still looks like a kid. He got lost in the mountains when he was 6 years old and Chudai was the one who found him 10 years later. Shinobu doesn't remember what happened back then, but he has continued to live his life. Just then, Shino realizes that Shinobu also has the same birthmark as them on his body. Meanwhile, Ao is seen in the forest forest taking down a barrier erected to block a tang. Shino informs Sosuke that he saw the birthmark on Shinobu's arm, but he hasn't talked to him deeply about the gem. He just asked casually, and Shinobu doesn't seem to have any idea what it is. Later that night, Chudai informs Shino that it is rumored that there is a tang in the mountains that whisks away pitiful children. These are children who seem to be in pain. Shinobu was taken because he had no idea who his father was. Sixteen years ago, they found his mother dead in the forest, and he was missing too. Chudai later found him and sealed his memories of the other side. He was taken by the tang, but Chudai got him back. Tengu practically raised Shinobu as his own child. That night, Shinobu suddenly stands up from his bed and walks outside after waking up from a weird dream. Chudai, Shino, and Sosuke find him surrounded by birds. A spirit unicorn known as Natsume is also seen with him. The Tengu shows up and whisks Shinobu away before the group can do anything about it. The Tengu claims that Shinobu is his child because humans once abandoned him and he is the one who raised him. Chudai, Sosuke, and Shino start to track the Tengu. Shinobu wakes up on the mountain from a dream that appears to be a memory. A Tengu known as Kagestsu is seen telling his brother Hazuki that Shinobu is now his son and he should help protect him. Kagetsu has already given half his life force to Shinobu. Shinobu wakes to see Hazuki standing over him. He asks him where Kagetsu is, and Hazuki reveals that Kagetsu is dead. Shino and Sosuke soon get to the mouth of the mountain, but they find out that there is a barrier. Murasame is about to break the barrier when Ao shows up. Ao reveals that he's there on a different mission. Before leaving, he tells them that the princess will soon awaken, 
and he will make sure that the group never gathers their eight gems. Now, on the mountain, Shinobu is shocked to find out that Kagetsu is dead. He can now remember everything that was previously lost in his memory. He remembers how Kagetsu was always the one caring for him, and the huge sacrifice he made to keep him alive. Shino and Sosuke return to the inn after Chudai falls off a cliff. Chudai is lucky to have survived the fall, but Shino and Sosuke have no choice but to take him back home. Tei tells Chudai to give up on going after Shinobu because she already has her mind made up that the Tang will come for him one day. Tei reveals that her daughter was always the wild one, and she does whatever she wants. She later found the letter that her daughter left for her. She revealed that the baby she was carrying had Tang as his father. It then dawns on the group that Shinobu actually has Tang's blood running through his veins. Back on the mountain, Hazu Hazuki decides to tell Shinobu that Kagetsu is not fully dead. After this, Hazuki meets with Ao in the forest. It appears that the two have a deal together. Ao is after the gem that is with Shinobu and Hazuki says he is free to take the gem. Shortly afterwards, Sosuke appears to Shinobu and says he is ready to take him to where Kagetsu's body is. He takes Shinobu to a waterside and he sees Kagetsu standing still. He has no consciousness in him but he doesn't appear to be dead either. Ao tells Shinobu that he can bring Kagetsu back to life by returning the power he gave to him. Without hesitation, Shinobu accepts this. He is about to do this when Hazuki shows up to stop him. Ao gets infuriated about this, and he attacks Hazuki. Shinobu jumps between the sword and gets cut deeply, leaving a pool of red liquid flowing on the floor. Just then, the injury site lights up and the gem falls out of there. At that same time, all the other seven gems start to glow. Ao approaches Shinobu and Hazuki, but Hazuki quickly picks up the gem. Ao tells him not to back down on their deal because he is supposed to get the gem in return for breaking the Tang barrier. He creates a wind attack and hits Ao with it. With this, Hazuki is able to escape with Shinobu. After his escape, Ao faces Kagetsu and says he is pretty sure that he is responsible for hiding the gem inside Shinobu's body. Later on, Hazuki gives Shinobu half of his life force to keep him from dying. Shinobu wakes up and scolds Hazuki for putting himself at risk just like Kagetsu did. Hazuki claims that he only did what a normal parent would have done. Shinobu starts to remember all the memories he shared with Kagetsu. He blames himself for Katsu's death, but Hazuki slaps him and tells him not to say that again. Suddenly, they realize that the mountain is on fire and this is Ao's doing. He is trying to force them out into the open. The two try to escape, but they run into Ao. He needs Hazuki to keep his end of the deal, but Hazuki says no. This leads to a fight between the two. Ao cuts Hazuki in the stomach, but he manages to create a fire barrier around Ao, giving them the time to escape. Shino and Sosuke are also on their way to the mountain. They can see the animals rushing toward the mountain and into the fire. Hazuki tells Natsume to take Shinobu away from the mountain to keep him safe. He gives Shinobu the gem, but Shinobu doesn't want to leave. Natsume grabs him and starts flying away. Shinobu continues to struggle with Natsume until he ends up falling from the sky. As he falls to his imminent death, his wings activate, helping him to make a soft landing. Hazuki Hazuki goes where Kagetsu's body is and releases his grip on the world, causing Kagetsu's body to turn to dust. Hazuki falls to his knees, ready to die when Ao shows up. Ao mocks him for rendering himself weak because of a child, and Hazuki says it is a parent's duty to make sacrifices for their child. Shinobu, on the other hand, is now returning to the mountain. He now considers the mountain his home, and he is ready to protect his home. He activates his wind power in an attempt to quench the fire. He is in the middle of this when Shino and Sosuke show up. Shino assures Shinobu that he can help. He picks up Murasami and activates his rain power. Rain comes pouring down on the mountain and Shinobu assists with the spread of the water with his wind power. The fire starts to die out and shortly afterward, the whole fire is out. Natsume shows up and he is very happy to see that Shinobu is safe. Natsume and Shinobu climb the mountain to find Hazuki, but they only see traces of red liquid on the floor. Shinobu assumes that Hazuki is dead and he starts to mourn him. He cries that he failed to do something tangible, but Shino tells him to take that back because he was able to protect and save the mountain, and that counts as something. Shinobu looks around to see that the animals living on the mountain are safe because of him. Elsewhere, Ao delivers Hazuki's body to the princess. Hazuki is now in a sleep state just like Kagetsu was before. It appears that Ao has used some kind of water to heal Hazuki and also clear out his memories of who he is. He laments that he was not able to get the gem he went for, but the princess assures him that everything is still going according to plan, as long as Satomi is unable to gather all the eight gems. There is one missing, and it is with them. Back in the village, Shinobu decides that he will follow Shino and Sosuke to the imperial capital. He wants to join them in hunting down Ao. He then reveals that he has the gem with him. Shino realizes that they have now been able to gather all eight gems. As they are about to leave the mountain, Sosuke notices that he is not seeing anything through his left eye but decides not to say anything about it. Soon afterward, the trio arrives at the capital. Shino knows something is wrong with Sosuke, but he can't clearly wrap his head around what it is. They make their way to the Konoya Inn where Shinobu will be staying. The boys gather the gem, and this makes them remember the tale of the eight dogs. They believe that the princess will soon awaken to grant their wishes. However, 
They are worried that Sosuke's gem is missing, and Shino blames himself for this. During the meeting, Daikaku tells the boys that he has something to show them. He takes off his headband to reveal the eye on his forehead. This scares everyone in the room as they find it disgusting and scary at the same time. He turns to Megu and uses his newly acquired third eye to control Megu. Megu uses its power to eliminate the shadow eaters that are in his presence. The boys have no idea what the eye is, and Kokono explains to them. She says the eye is called the evil eye, and it has the ability to perceive those who are not humans and destroy them. The eye usually comes from cats, she says. Shino and Daikaku realize that it must be Noro's doing. He has been endowed with the cat spirit. After the meeting, Sosuke tells Shino that he is heading to the manor because he has some things to attend to. Once Sosuke is gone, Asakeno finds Shino to talk to him about Sosuke. He tells Shino that something is off about Sosuke. He has been able to figure out Sosuke cannot see out of his left eye. In addition, he is also not feeling pains in his left arm. This comes as a shock to Shino, and he hates himself for not noticing all of this earlier. Shino realizes that everything happening must be Aowo's doing. He has stolen Sosuke's eye just like he promised to steal everything from him. Shino Shino runs away from the inn and starts heading to the manor. At the manor, Sosuke is seen having a meeting with Satomi. Sosuke tells Satomi about the eighth gem and the fact that they ran into Ao while they were in the village. He informs Satomi that Ao made mention of a princess awakening. Sosuke wants to know if Ao is talking about Princess Fuse. Satomi then says Ao might not be referring to Fuse, but Princess Tamazusa. He decides to narrate the tale surrounding Tamazusa to Sosuke. Tamazusa came from a neighboring village to their land and she had two sons with her. However, she was not allowed to enter with both her sons. A government official demands that she release one of her sons to him. She agonized over the decision, but finally offered her youngest son. The son was taken away and killed. When the other son heard this, he also took his own life. With this, Tamazusa is left with nothing at all. Sosuke is sad to hear this and says anyone who hears the story will be sorry for Tamazusa. After the narration, Satomi asks Sosuke when his left eye has been like that. He reveals that it started a week ago. Satomi is worried that the more Ayo grows stronger, the more he will steal from Sosuke. Satomi is concerned that Shino will not take it lightly when he finds out, but Sosuke promises to do something about it before he finds out. Sosuke leaves the office and runs into Shino outside. Shino scolds him for not telling him about the eye. Shino wants to leave and hunt Ao down, but Sosuke stops him. Sosuke tells him that he will handle things by himself. The following day, Shino is in his room when Chikage shows up. He wants Shino to come and keep Ayane company. She has a cold and she is just recovering. Shino obliges and makes his way to Ayane's room. Ayane tells him that she is already feeling good, thanks to the medicine that Hamaji gave him. The duo starts to talk about their experiences over the past couple of weeks. Meanwhile, Kanami is seen running to Sosuke for help. He says Finnegan is in the manor and he needs someone to help get rid of him, so he won't stay long. Sosuke accepts to help, and he finds a way to talk to Finn to get him to start leaving quickly. On the other hand, Shikaji tells Shino that he can now leave because he only wants the visit to be brief. As they leave Ayana's room, Shino tells Shikaji to give Ayane more free time. He might be worried that she is weak and wouldn't be safe outside the walls of the compound, but he should let her out on some days so she can have a life of her own. The fear of Ayane dying shouldn't hold her back, he says. Shino leaves Chikage's territory and heads to Sosuke's room to apologize. As he is going up the stairs, Finn is also coming down the stairs. They walk past each other and Finn makes mention of Shino having the same eyes as his mother. This triggers the memory that Satoshi Tomi sealed away before and Shino passes out cold on the floor. He is taken to his room by Kaname and Sosuke. Shino sees his younger self holding the hands of someone who appears to be his brother as she sings a poem. He wakes up to see Satomi standing in front of him. Shino starts singing the poem and Satomi helps him complete it with the missing lyrics. He wonders how Satomi knows the missing lyrics, but he decides not to trouble himself too much on that. He starts to ask Satomi how Finn knows his mother. Satomi then tells him that if he cannot remember, it is probably for a good reason. Satomi then tells Shino to focus on his mission, which is the gems. Shino gets angry and says Sosuke should come first. He wants to fix what is happening to Sosuke. Satomi then reveals that the gems choose their owners, and they will never let their owners die until their purpose has been fulfilled. Shino realizes that the gem Ao stole must have started to choose him over Sosuke. At that same moment, Sosuke collapses in the hallway and the birthmark disappears from his body. The birthmark then appears on Ao's body. Even at this, Ao says he is not done yet. He wants to make sure that he obtains everything before he can finally rest. Sosuke is taken to the medical wing of the manor. Shino blames himself for being careless and allowing Ao to steal Sosuke's gem from him. Satomi says Sosuke's soul is gradually being drawn to the underworld. Shino runs away from the manor into the street to start looking for clues on how to locate Ao and recover the gem. Meanwhile, Koko Kokono has noticed an unusual increase in the number of spirits that are in the capital. Shino begins to question all the people in the street to try and see if there is anyone 
who has seen Ao or knows his whereabouts. In the process of this, a woman approaches him and says she knows where Ao is holed up. The woman leads Shino into an alley. Shino knows that the woman is a spirit, but he doesn't mind. He wants to see what the woman would do. The woman transforms into her demon form with the intention of consuming Shino. Asakeno shows up right on time to block the woman. The woman turns her attention toward Asakeno. She summons hundreds of demonic rats to surround the two. Shino is afraid of rats, and he starts jumping out of fear, leaving only Asakeno to deal with the problem. Just then, Kaede shows up and takes care of the rats. Once the rats are gone, Shino is presented with the chance to deal with the demon. He summons his sword and eliminates the woman. After the dust has settled, Shino begs Kaede to help him look for the duty gem because anywhere the gem is, Ao will be there too. Kaede is forced to accept the mission. Shino then retries to the inn in order to wait for Kaede's feedback. Moments later, Kaede shows up with reports of where the gem is. He says all the gems are currently in the Imperial capital, which means Ao is also in the capital. The last gem they are looking for is at the Old Castle District Church. He then adds spirits are already gathering around the church. Shino is about to head to the church, but Daikaku, Asakeno and Shinobu offer to follow him. They believe that Shino will not be able to handle Ao alone. Kaede is told to inform Genpachi and Kobungo about the latest development. Genpachi and Kobungo soon learn of this and they head to the church. Genpachi tells Kaede to tell the others about this too. Satomi, Nachi, Dosetsu, and Hamaji soon learn of this too. Shortly afterward, Shino and the first to leave arrive at the church. They proceed to the basement of the church where they pass through a hall filled with human skeletons. As they approach the altar, Ao shows up and reveals reveals his excitement that Shino and the others came. Shino requests that Ao return the gem with him, but he refuses. He claims that the gem has chosen him already and there is no need for him to return it. They are in the middle of this argument when the princess shows herself. Shino and Daikaku realize that she is the same person as the doll that Inumura carved. She introduces herself to the group as Tamazusa. She activates her magic and all of the skeletons in the basement are brought back to life. A full-fledged battle ensues between the group and the undead. Shino faces off with Ao in a bid to retrieve the gem. Now at the church's headquarters, Finn has ordered the elders to put up a powerful barrier in preparation for the impending danger. The elders are using the spirit's lives to create the barrier. Satomi learns of Shino's whereabouts and he is about to leave but he is stopped by Lilith. Finn informs him that they can't allow him to leave because the barrier is up and running already. Satomi's departure might disrupt the balance of the barrier, rendering it useless. The battle at the old church continues, and the undead can't seem to stop coming. Daikaku uses his evil eye to eliminate as many as he can, but that doesn't seem to be enough. Moments later, Genpachi and Kobungo also join them in the basement. Suddenly, Hazuki appears out of the shadows. However, this is not the Hazuki that Shinobu knows. This Hazuki already has everything taken away from him. Shinobu finds it hard to fight Hazuki. Shino continues his fight with Ao. Just then, Dustsu arrives and this makes Tamazusa happy because this is what she has been waiting for. She wants the eight gems to converge and they have done that. She is now ready to set her plan in motion. She activates a magic barrier that she had put in place before the battle began. This magic removes their gems from their bodies and renders their powers useless. Every one of them returns to their usual self. Meanwhile, Sosuke is getting worse with each minute that goes by. Tamazusa creates a circle with the gems, and the boys cannot do anything to stop her. Shino tries to move forward, but Hazuki cuts him down. Tamazusa plans to use the gems to summon Princess Fuse, so she can absorb her powers. Shino manages to stand up and crawls to the altar. Tama says she is impressed with his resilience. She brings out the same water that was given to Hazuki, and she feeds it to Shino. She plans to use Shino as one of her vessels. Shino starts to mutter Sosuke's name as he falls to the ground. Shino begins to lose consciousness of himself, and this makes him remember all the memories he has shared with Sosuke. He then remembers the promise he made to Sosuke that he will always protect him and Hamaji. They have always been the ones protecting him when he is sick and weak, but it is now his time to do so. As he lies in his own pool of body fluid, the gems activate a portal to summon Fuse. Back at the church, Satomi reminds Finn that it will be catastrophic if they allow Tama to go ahead with her plan while they hide out in the church. As Tama begins to receive power from the energy source that is entering the church, Ao goes to where Shino is and picks him up. Shino opens his eyes to see Tamazusa, and this makes him remember that she was the one who killed them. Fuse looks into Shino's eyes, and this creates a determination in him to make a wish. His wish is to bring Sosuke back to life. His wish comes true, and Sosuke opens his eyes where he is lying. The moment this happens, Tama starts to lose her grip on Fuse and the gems. Princess Fuse disappears, and the gems go back to their respective owners. The duty gem also rejects Ao as its owner, and the birthmark leaves Ao's body to appear on Sosuke's body. Sosuke wakes up and learns that 
that Shino is the one responsible for him coming back to life. Kaede says Shino must have exhausted himself to do this. Sosuke realizes that Shino might be in danger and he jumps out of bed. He transforms into his dog form and starts running to the old church. Now in the church, Tama asks Ao to hand Shino over to her but he refuses. Tama is surprised that Sosuke will choose to defy him. He draws his sword on her and Tama orders Hazuki to take down Ao. A fight breaks out between the two but Satomi arrives just in time to break Tama's barrier. All the boys immediately receive back their powers. Genpachi and Kobungo go after Hazuki. Shinobu flies towards Shino to check on him. Tama realizes that she has lost the battle already and she decides to retreat. Shino has lost so much body fluid, and this is beginning to affect Murasame. He begins to go rampage because of his need for red liquid. Murasame starts to consume Shino, and he transforms into his giant scary self. His image can be seen far and wide all over the city. Kobungo, Genpachi, and Shinobu try to get Shino to get a hold of himself, but he appears to be far gone already. None of them seems to be able to stand Murasame's strength and power. In the middle of the chaos, Sosuke arrives and cries out to his friend to hear him. Even with how loud he is, Shino can't seem to hear him. Murasame has him under his thumbs completely. Murasame attacks Sosuke, but he is not ready to give up. He still proceeds to walk toward Murasame as he mutters Shino's name. Satomi and Kaname use their spirit animals to try and give Sosuke more access to Murasame, but Murasame easily knocks them out. Shino finally hears Sosuke's voice, but he still cannot get a hold of himself. He tells Sosuke to run and leave him alone, but Sosuke is not ready to do that. Sosuke tells Shino that he was only able to come back to life because of him. He reminds him of the promise he made to him and Hamaji that he will always be there to protect him. Murasame opens its mouth and is about to consume Sosuke, but Shino cries out loudly and he is able to stop this and also get Murasame under control. Shino returns to his normal self and Sosuke quickly grabs him. The rest of the gang also shows up and surrounds the two to check on Shino. While everyone is celebrating the return of Shino, Ao gets up and leaves quietly. Now at the church's headquarters, Finn and Lilith show their relief that Murasame has calmed down and everything is now under control. Later on, Shino talks to Satomi in his office. He asks him if he was the one in his memory holding his hand, but Satomi refuses to answer. Shino knows that person is Satomi, but he just wants to confirm. He also also asks about Tamasuza, but Satomi refuses to give an answer. Satomi then reminds Shino that he still has the mission to track down the last gem that is with Ao. Shino complains that there has been no progress since the start of the mission, but Sosuke reminds him that they have friends all the way. Shino then swears to Sosuke that he will retrieve his gem for him. The end.